Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, uh, my stream that's a conversation. We have here today with us, as usual, Landon, my co-host. Say hi, Landon. Hi, it's a two Starbucks morning this morning. That's how you know it's going to be spicy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, we'll get into that in a second. But first, I would like everybody to say hi to our guest today. Sasha is back, so you know it's going to be a good spicy one. If Sasha's here, say hi, Sasha. Hello. I'm here to bring it, y'all. Back. <laughs> bring yeah, it. And we're bring expecting a long episode today, right? Like, it's probably going to mm -hmm. be over our two-hour mark, so y'all get ready. Strap in. Go get your go get yourself a Starbucks. I really do, like, support that. Support capitalism <laughs> that way. Um, <laughs> in that one way. <laughs> Just in that one way, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So hi, Brie. Hi, Leonor. Hi, Katie. I'm so glad for you guys to join us today. And anyone else that hasn't spoken up, hi to you too. Oh, thank you so much for the bits and that howl, Lunar. I really appreciate it. Um, so before we kind of get into it, uh, though, as usual, Landon, what is it that we're going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about the topic of abuse and specifically online abuse. Um, so it is going to be a bit of a content warning um but we need to like we're going to be talking about some um really heavy things today if you've been a victim or a perpetrator of online abuse and um are still working through that this might not be the stream for you or at least to be aware that that's what we're going to be talking about um and we're going to get specific we're going to bring up uh situations that we've been involved in or at least watched and um it might get hit a little close to home so just be aware and be cautious when listening to this episode. Yep, yep. We're gonna get into specific behaviors and things like that, so for sure, for sure. All right, um, so before we do that though, just so that everybody has time to kind of get in and all of that good stuff, do we wanna start with favorite things? I do think favorite things is an important thing, yes. So Sasha, okay. you are our guest. Do you wanna come first? You wanna go first? Oh, okay, let's see. Um... Right now, my favorite thing is a uh, leftover sushi. Ooh. I'm, I'm eating that right now for breakfast because I always roll out of bed like 30 minutes before the stream. <laughs> so I have to just hustle up a snack. But I am a person who truly believes in leftover sushi. I like other people won't eat it if it's like two hours old. And I am here for you. I am here to support that sushi being eaten and call me. I had a coworker once who didn't want to finish her sushi and she called me from like two cubicle rows over to eat the sushi and I just took it in front of everybody. <laughs> I love that like, so much. Just I a vibe gremlin with that. See, I vibe with that yeah. hard. <laughs> For me, it's not the issue of necessarily like the fish. I'm fine with that. Uh, but I find that if it's like next morning sushi and it's been in your fridge all night, the rice is super like gross to eat. So it's no longer the rice sushi. Is sushi is dry sushi. right now. Yeah, I and I find say. that that's what, that's what ruins the leftover sushi experience for me. Um, I'm like, the fish is fine. Everything else, though, it's the rice that really is the bummer. So this when is what I do someone, to fix that. You're forgiving. Because, so this is what I do to fix that, because I am definitely a leftover sushi person. We usually order too much sushi just so Karen, me, can eat it as leftovers and no one else will touch it. <laughs> But yes, um, so you can get that's how you, you should do it. Yes, but you can get that eel sauce, you know, that they put on a lot of the sushis. You can get it on Amazon. So just put some more eel sauce on your sushi and then it, it's fine. It's fine that the rice is a bit old and dry. You shouldn't have told me that because now I'm going to just have eel sauce every day. <laughs> it's yeah. like my favorite thing. There you go. We're still breaking your imagination. <laughs> We're setting your mind free. Take the red pill. Thank you. The eel pill, if you will. The, the eel <laughs> pill. Oh my god, I love it. Yep. Hi, Erica. Hi, Venom. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are still on favorite things. You haven't missed anything yet. Uh, yeah, so I'm definitely a leftover sushi person. I'm I'm right there with you, Sasha. Give me that leftover sushi. I will eat it if you don't want it. We are if all just know. imagine us all eating leftover sushi during this chat. That's what's <laughs> happening in our mind palaces, in Sasha's <laughs> reality, but in Karen and I's mind pal palace. Right. <laughs> Beautiful there. Um. All right, Karen. Do you have a favorite thing? Yes. Okay. So I want to give a kitten update for my favorite thing. So as you guys know, um, uh, Coke and CJ they they came in the house pregnant. That was just that was what happened. 
And um, so, and does uh, and, know that? I feel like yeah, stream well, didn't know that. I mean, I've talked about it on the Thursday stream. So if you if you oh, watch the Thursday stream, you know that. Um, I don't Fake, know if I've talked about our interstate Fake. window. Fake fan. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Stop being such a fake fan. God. And then, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. So uh, I'm trying to just make sure that Interstage Window viewers have everything. So Hoke had her kittens. Um, she did have five kittens, but one didn't survive. It was sad, but I mean, it was pretty quick. Like it, they only lasted like about 48 hours, but the four are still going strong, doing well. Um, BJ has not had her kittens yet but she is very pregnant it's gonna pop any day if you want to see pictures they are all over the cafe so hop in the discord and take a look at those um i'm trying to find people who will take the kittens and probably also uh cj and coke i think we'll keep maybe one kitten but um but yeah we already have queen and ash so we don't need a whole house full of cats can't afford them anyways that's way too many oh. kittens for one person well three people to raise <laughs> Um, I'll just, you know, be Katniss Everdeen and just be like, I volunteer as tribute! Please Give come me get a them. kitten! <laughs> come get them, come get them. If you want kittens and you live on the East Coast, um, hit me up. Let me know if you're interested and we'll work something out. They need about eight weeks or so to, uh, to mature, so hit me up in June and yeah, uh, I'll get you a the, kitten. I think we did the math, it was like the first week of June or whatever. Mm -hmm. First week of June. And CJ hasn't popped yet, so hers will be a little bit later in June, I assume. <sighs> kitten season is is the most stressful time of the year for me uh because yep. i just want all of the kittens well and usually the spcas at least around here they'll have discounts if you go there so yeah oh really <laughs> see my my shelters here will literally like i did the math i did the math garen it would be cheaper for me to fly to you get the kitten drive the 15 hours back in a rental car than it would be to adopt a kitten at my local shelter that that's is how ridiculous. ridiculous that's how ridiculous prices are currently at my at my shelters <laughs> oh my god y'all must have a lot of people that want to adopt or something because it's not like that here they like really they will they will give those kittens to anyone who like you know pretty much anyone <laughs> well see here's the here's the issue because that's like for any kitten under the age of one and then you hit one year old and then it's like oh cats are twenty dollars <laughs> oh well yeah that's true but everyone wants want the the kittens kittens Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like okay, by everyone true. i mean i'm also guilty of that i i did that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hear you i mean we always adopt, adopt adults because um i'm lazy and they're easier <laughs> that's but the kittens fair. are very cute kittens all right yep. that's mine what's your favorite thing today landon i honestly was going to talk about the kittens but then you did because your life i'm just vicariously living through you um <laughs> <laughs> no i i discovered I was very late to the party. This was on TikTok, and I was getting clips of, like, I had somehow, even though I don't play D&D, somehow had made my way on D&D &D TikTok and started mm. getting, like, little clips of Dimension 20, the show. Uh, and it looked really fun and funny, and it's by, it's by the cast from College Humor, and I was like, this seems like a thing that I would like. And by like, I mean that it's consumed my life for the last four days. Oh my god! I'm pretty sure I have made it through like a ridiculous amount of content in the last four days, um, and oh. it's not good because graduation's in a month, and I have more homework and schoolwork than I know what to do with. Um, but I love it, so everyone should go watch it. It's fantasy high school meets found family trope meets uh, just humor. <laughs> Oh my god, that I, that's so what good. I'm saying. Everyone needs to just go watch it. D and D goodness. And it, I guess it's the college humor people. It's a um, it's like a internet show, right? That they post like on YouTube or something. Yeah the the season that I'm watching was filmed originally in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, so they have like several seasons, and it is it's on YouTube. So go watch, go forth. <laughs> All right. Well, I know what I'm putting on my to watch list next. It's really good, and I hate myself for it. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know it's really good when it's like that, though. When you just oh. can't stop, and you put it on in the background. Yeah. No, it's... I love it. So everyone should go watch it. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> shall we get into the content topic, since we do have a long list of things in front of us? 
Yes, yes, yes. So I know that Landon already said this, but just before we get into it too much, I just want to reiterate for anybody that's popped into the stream um, since the very beginning is uh, there's content warning for this one. So please proceed with caution. If you're a victim or a perpetrator of online abuse and you're still working through that, then, um, you know, maybe this isn't the right episode for you. We're going to get specific as far as like abusive behaviors and things like that. So just be aware that if you have been through that situation, some of the stuff that we say might really hit close to home. Um, so it's up to you. It's up to you if you listen or not. Okay, I've told you now. Um, it's you're, you're all adults. Make good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Go forth and decide. <laughs> yes. um, did we want to start out with the definition of abuse? Yeah, so... Sasha, I know you did a lot of research for this, so yeah. um, I think uh, let's, Sasha, if you want to kind of get started on that and uh, guide us through this, uh, this, these basics when it comes to a sure. sure, I'm actually going to skip around on our little outline then because I put the definition of abuse in the middle. Okay. We can, do, so, we can do a quick uh, definition and then come back to it when we get farther sure, through okay. the basics. Okay. I just thought it would be All a good right. thing to like just be like, this is, by the way, where we're starting. Okay. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. abuse is a relational dynamic where one person has power over another and exerts that power in a way that causes persistent harm to the less empowered person in order to accrue privileges to the more empowered person. Abuse is about taking advantage of a power imbalance to exploit or control someone else. Conflict, where there is no such power imbalance, is not abuse. So I just want to point that out there. For example, if all of us got into a big, nasty fight right now, we are all kind of on the same playing field. Like, if we keep it, if we just yelled at each other on voice chat, it would not be abuse. It would be conflict. And there can be behaviors that are like really inappropriate in a conflict, like name calling or if you punched me or whatnot. But I that would you through not the necessarily internet, through the tubes. Yeah, you punched me through the internet, but that is not necessarily <laughs> abuse because abuse is about a pattern and a power imbalance. And I think that people get that confused a lot. They're like, something harmful happened to me or something uncomfortable happened to me. It must be abuse. I'm like, no, there are plenty of other things that it could be. That is not abuse. Yeah, harmful harmful behavior does not equate abuse. Or you just being uncomfortable. That, you yeah, being I mean, uncomfortable does too. not mean you have been harmed, by the way. Just because you feel bad, it doesn't mean that something bad has actually happened to you. You could just be reacting from your own baggage so uh let's put all of that out there first yeah and if you do need help with like conflict or uncomfortable feelings or things like that we have a whole episode which is what inspired us to actually talk about some online abuse because we have a whole episode about conflict so you can look like about a month ago or so on the inner stage window playlist and find that if that is more what you're actually looking for Yes. And I think that that's a really important thing to highlight. Um, that, that, that it is about that power imbalance. It is about that one person having more power than another. Or exerting what power they have, or yeah. it's about a pattern of behavior or, yes. um, or things like that. So with that being said, with a definition out of the way, um, what are some of what are some of the basic frameworks that we want to that we want to highlight in regards to um, how abuse happens? What are some of those basics? Well, I think that the first one is pretty out there, um, but does bear repeating and does some people do need reminders is that you do not have the right to abuse anybody. Right? Like that's that you that yes, conflict is normal, that there is a, that, that we have to accept that in our lives, that you, there are times that A, will be made uncomfortable, and B, we will make people uncomfortable. But the actual, like, handling of a power imbalance and behave, and repeated behavior of, of affecting somebody else is not a right that you have. 
No, um, and when we say that, we mean like you don't have the right to abuse anyone, no matter no. how awful someone is, no matter how gross they are, no matter how uncomfortable they make you. You are not. You don't have the right to do that to anybody. And like whatever, whatever like boogeyman you can think of. You still don't have the right to abuse that person. Absolutely. Go ahead, Sasha, Sasha, I think I, I cut you yeah, off. Yeah, what were you gonna say? Oh no, you're fine. I was just gonna say, like, this. I see this thing that happens in a lot of supposedly social justice oriented communities. They're like, I don't believe in abuse until it's somebody that I don't like, Ugh. somebody that I think has done something wrong, and then all bets are off. And it's like, remember this someone out there you are absolute dog shit i don't care how good you think you are i don't care what side of the political spectrum you are on somebody hates you and they think that you are the acceptable abuse victim and so if you think that you can unleash these tactics on other people then in truth you are in agreement with other people who commit abuse like the only difference between you and them is deciding who is an acceptable victim. You just disagree on acceptable victims, but you do agree on victimizing other people based on your belief. So if you're if that pisses you off, then maybe you need to consider your behavior. Like you either think abuse is wrong and it shouldn't be done, or you we are just arguing over who you think is an acceptable target, whether that target is you or your friends or whoever else in the world yeah and i and, and i think oh, keep going the, no and the, i think that that ties really really well into this idea of um that in our societies we do have this proclivity to sit there and, and think that there are people that we can abuse especially in um the political scene or, or now that we have like taken to social media, there is this understanding of being like, oh yeah, no, we can, we can try to, we can be okay with someone else being treated horribly, um, and that like, that that in itself is is okaying that abuse and making it okay, and that opens the door to the one of our pillars is just sitting there and saying that anyone can be abusive, um, mm -hmm. including you, you listener. You who are sitting here listening to us talk, us here in our conversation, we have the ability, and I would even say the society that has set us up to have the tools to be abusive. Yeah, I think that's very true um, because we are, we live in, we live in a society. Okay, <laughs> but we live in a society <laughs> where where it's considered normal and right when somebody does something bad for them to be punished. And especially if you are the party that's wronged, it can just feel so good to do that, that you end up like punishing the person over and over and over again, even after, you know, so-called justice has been served. And, and that's not right. Like, that's not right. You know, somebody shouldn't have to pay for their crimes for forever and ever, I'm in. Um, but in a lot of our societies, that's that's what ends up happening. And um, <clears throat> so when we say that you don't have the right to abuse anyone, like, that's a lot of what that means, too. You know, once somebody has faced their consequences for their actions, like, you, you got to stop, even if they hurt you, right? You got to stop. Yeah, and I think that that's a that's a different that's an importance to highlight is the difference between someone receiving consequences for their actions, such as someone disliking them or um, being hurt by a situation that they put themselves in or something like that, versus the abuse tactic. And by hurt, I mean not like physically hurt. I mean like they suffered consequences of their actions. Yeah. Um, it's versus consequences that versus punishment. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and that, that like, that ability that everybody possesses to be abusive comes from toxic beliefs and toxic habits in our lives. And it's not, so it's not necessarily even something you're born with. It's something that we're kind of trained into. And that's why it's really important to to inspect ourselves, to look into ourselves, to try to figure out where are these behaviors and beliefs coming from? What do they look like? 
and how do I possess them? Because you do possess them. Whether you're using them or not, they are ingrained in you in some way. Yep, absolutely. I want to, briefly for the audience, I want to explain the difference between consequences and punishment. Consequences yeah. is about a proportional loss of privilege when you do something wrong. So like, for example, if you get into a fight at a concert and you punch somebody, you get thrown out of the concert, right? So that's or a consequence. <laughs> yeah. You have just dis- you have disrupted this concert. You have to go outside. Punishment is if they take you outside and beat you up. You kind of mm-hmm. see the difference there. Like one of those things was a loss of privilege. The other thing was potentially threatening your right to like safety, possibly your right to live. So when you when somebody in your community, for example, violates a rule and you're like, or you you just don't like them and you say goodbye, you have to leave. That could be a consequence. But when you start going around to like every single community to try and get them banned from every other place, you are now enacting punishment. Like barring that person has done something like prolifically harmful in recent memory that you have solid proof of. And by the way, most people cannot meet the standard of proof from what I've seen. Like, <laughs> has harmed a real person not like is dangerous by the way because that's one of the phrases i no longer trust quote is dangerous i'm like yeah whatever what is that that? can't trust those words mean anything anymore so unless you have proof that someone has committed serious harm to another real life person in recent memory you are enacting just punishment Like, you just want to punish this person. Admit it. Like, you just want to feel powerful. You want to feel important. You want to feel like you have agency. You want to feel like the Cape Crusader. You want to feel like the good guy. It doesn't have anything to do with actually helping anybody. That is what you tell yourself. And your listener, I'm sure you are telling yourself that right now. But I promise that if you invited me into your dms and you asked me to and like we i deconstructed this with you i am confident that in 95 percent of cases i could show you that you are being punishing and not enacting a consequence as landon said this is you know as landon and karen said this is a society where like punishment feels good it just feels good to take somebody down when you feel like you have been harmed, but one of the things you're going to basically hear is that you cannot govern, society cannot be governed by your feelings. It cannot be governed by your hurt feelings. Like, we do not have, this is America, but we don't have, like, due process and the right to a trial based on feeling. Those are not based on feeling. Those are and based on wanna, principles. And I kind of and I want to take that point that and you're saying. That point that you're Sorry, saying. I'm hearing myself okay. echo. Sorry, so, um, echo. Sasha, do you have so, headphones uh, you can you can use? Sure. Sorry. Um, okay. So I also want to make that point as far as like these feelings and these like I'm when it comes to putting yourself in that abusive, uh, that that position of being abusive, um, that it's. Those feelings might also be, by the way, they're not conscious feelings. They're not feelings that you're like, oh, I am doing this behavior because I want to feel powerful. Um, It's not like this conscious, for most people, this conscious power, but that is where it's like based off of. And it's important to, to highlight that abuse is the product of like beliefs and habits and not that um, just that emotional satisfaction Um, that the abusive behaviors come from like entitlement um rather than necessarily like i need to exact like that vengeance if there's a difference between i deserve a re- i deserve uh this justice versus vengeance mm-hmm. yep so there's so a point with this that i want to make sure that that we make is that now we can hear we can hear you typing sasha <laughs> did you find God, damn it did you find headphones? I did find your headphones. Okay. Can't okay. you can't make these women happy, listener. No, yeah, we can't. We're really <laughs> It's picky. true. Perpetually upset. <laughs> so, um, lots of people have strong Ladies. emotions. 
So the point I want to make anyways, it's okay, Sasha, you're good. Uh, the typing's not that loud. Uh, many people have strong emotions. You know, maybe they are diagnosed with depression. Maybe they're diagnosed with anxiety, anger management, da 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 like you get the idea. But like having strong emotions doesn't justify your behavior, right? And if we think about this in a, mo in a more um, obvious context, I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Like just because you're angry with someone does not give you the right to punch them in the face. Even if like you really, really want to and it would feel really good and they kind of deserve it and blah, 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 all of that stuff, right? So just being angry with someone doesn't give you the right to punch them in the face. And it's the same thing when it comes to abusive behaviors, feeling like you have justification, feeling like you're really upset with that person, like that doesn't give you the right to exact vengeance against them. And I love the example that um, Sasha used about the difference between kicking somebody out of your space or your Discord server to be more specific, and then going around to other Discord server owners and being like, this person did this thing, this person is racist or homophobic or dangerous or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter to me what that person did. They still deserve the right to go to another space and try to do better next time. And by telling other people about it, you're enacting that vengeance and you're taking that opportunity away from them. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it is that like. Sorry, Sasha. I'm so sorry. It's like whatever you're doing. Like we it, we can hear everything. I don't know what's happening. If you want to maybe try to use Discord's noise gate or something. Oh, streaming is so complicated. <laughs> sorry, y'all. <laughs> no. It's <laughs> we're good um but yeah no it is that like idea of of vengeance versus um like yeah and i i liked the idea of i really wanted to go back to what sasha's metaphor was as far as like you're at a concert and you punch someone punishment versus uh like punishment versus um justice is that the word that she used uh punishment versus versus consequences consequences yes yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you yeah because consequences is justice is also like you know, subjective. Um. <laughs> yeah, this, this is very subjective because some people are just like that. That's that's why I don't use the word justice because you have different kinds of justice. You have retributive justice. You have restorative justice. You have transformative justice. So yeah. like, that's why we don't get into that one list. Here. There are a bunch. Um, but yeah, I like that that idea of you can't just escalate situations so if someone you know makes you angry you can't punch them in the face um if someone punches you in the face you can't then get your friends to punch them in the face um that is that is taking it and escalating it to a higher level of power and that in itself is like a step in a, an abusive situation um and it's and we really just need to be aware of those actions and really try to see where they're stemming from and where they're coming from um and 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 realize the beliefs and habits that we have ingrained in ourselves uh and 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 accept that but also not react on those yes and and i did want to reiterate what uh landon said about um anyone can be abusive um abusive behavior comes from entitlement and a desire for privilege and benefits it is a strategy to gain and maintain control over other people it is not about your emotions it's actually not about your feelings people are like oh but they made me so angry i was so hurt but like plenty of people have strong emotions and they do not abuse other people think about every call center representative that deals with like screening people for eleven dollars an hour you think they don't feel strong emotions but like there is a choice many people like experience depression, anxiety, anger, loneliness, and they do not abuse other people. So it is always a choice. It is not, oh no, my emotions are just stronger than the average bears. That is not true. If you're using that justification, I was just so hurt. I'm like, no, you have choices. You have, there was all, there is always a series of steps that leads up to hurting another person. Yeah. It is not like you slip on a banana peel. This is not Mario Kart. Like, you made choices and other people experiencing your same emotions are not making the same choices, which means that they're choices. 
And even if you are a, like a survivor of abuse or a survivor of anything or an oppressed person, you can still come down with these entitled beliefs. I, like I said, I've seen people in social justice scenarios who basically warp their social justice beliefs in some ways to be like, all right, based on my new templates, I can be the abusive one and be the good guy. It's like, mm -mm. nope, you're still, it's still just as bad. Yep. And we've seen, and I mean, now that we're saying it, I'm sure that everybody that's listening can think of examples where they've seen that, you know, someone saying, well, I can't be abusive because I am a victim or I can't be abusive because I am part of marginalized group X, Y, Z. And that's just, that's not true. And you know, it's not true if it's been said to you because it just, it, it, it's so obviously not the case. Like everyone can be abusive. And that, and that in itself is like you're scapegoating, right? You're, you're trying to blame your, your behavior on things that you can control and trying to make it this bigger thing than you um, and that your actions are not yourself. It's, it's something that we see that is a lot, seen a lot in abusive behavior um, when you get right down to like the, be- the abusive actions, but it's also on the higher level of justifying abuse of that, oh, I am not responsible for my actions. I am out of control. They are just results of the things that I feel. And that's not true. It's not. <laughs> Every yeah, action is a decision. It's fucking wild. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fucking wild because like that is like the classic why I beat my wife story, yep. which I'm sure most listeners are like, no, that's terrible. But oh man, if it comes to like doxing somebody online, they're like, well, I was just in my feelings. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So it's cool after all. No, and that's the important thing to, to show is that abuse is abuse at any level. Like the steps are exactly the same no matter what the action is. Um, abuse and- is almost formula- formulaic. And that's why like when yeah. if you're taking any classes in school or you're learning about the abuse cycle, it is considered a cycle. And that's because it happens the same way every single time. It doesn't matter what the actions are in those cycles. Each step is exactly the same. Yep. And it and it goes from beating your wife and what was that, Sasha? Attitude. I was gonna say it's when the same justifications are like crop yep. up where you're like, oh well. Being in your feelings doesn't justify beating your wife, but you know sometimes you are in your feelings and you send to somebody, uh, you send somebody anonymous asks to kill themselves. Like you don't get to say that like oh like you know you, you gotta have enough control not to beat your wife, but I don't have an I don't need to have enough control to like not harass people online. It's like hmm, once again you know, we're seeing some we see some inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it, it, yeah, there's those inconsistencies. And then it also like really gives insight into who is saying and where they believe their morality lies, right? Um, that they don't think telling someone to kill themselves is as harmful as hitting another human being. Um, and oh. there could be an argument saying, sitting there and saying that maybe those things can't be equated, but they are both abusive behaviors and they both induce harm. So. Oh. I want to say this really quick. It's not in the outline. So, listener, I read this book called Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft, and he is um, basically a guy that ran a therapy program for abusive men. Like, that's what he did. That's what he, he writes from, and that's what I kind of read to gain some more insight into, like, the abusive mindset. And one of the things he says in it, he's just like, every abuse, like, most abusers, or almost every abuser in my program says that they are not truly abusive. Like, they believe abuse exists but it's always an iteration higher than whatever they're doing. So like if they're a psychological abuser, they're like, well, I don't beat my wife. And if they beat their wives, they're like, I only hit her with an open hand. And if they like, you know, black their their wife's eye, they're like, I don't break her bones. Like it's always like abuse is always that thing that is not you. And it is that one level away, which is part of the abusive mindset. The thing that I am not doing is not real abuse. And I and a lot of times people will hold themselves back from the line that they consider real abuse. So the person who sends like, oh, they send the you should kill yourself ask, well, they don't dox. And the person that dox doesn't call jobs. And the person that calls jobs doesn't call the SWAT team. 
Like everybody all the way up and all the way down is like, the thing that I am doing is not too far. The thing that I am doing is the okay thing. The thing that other people do is the thing that's bad. And that is like, that's part of the mindset. If you're doing that, like, that's the problem. But I also think that it is important to highlight and mention that like most things and most behaviors in our lives, uh, like equating to addiction, um, things escalate. So abusive behavior that wasn't, that was like maybe sitting there and going from, well, I, I don't dox because that's too far. If you continue to send um, hateful anonymous okay. messages uh, and you are no longer feeling that sense of power that you are trying to are trying to uh, have, then you will make that next step. It might take time, but you will do it. Um, behavior and abuse escalates. And that is an important thing to remember too, that if abuse goes unchecked and you continue your abas- ab- abusive behaviors, you will eventually get to those lines and that line will then be pushed back. Yeah, because they're, they're not, you know, it's what Landon says, and this is what happens, again, with people that, like, feed their lives. Like, you know, it's it starts off and it escalates because the feeling of control that you d- derive from the initial hit, like, you have to, you have to escalate it to maintain it. Yeah. Well, like, in that, the person who calls the SWAT team on someone they feel is a pedophile or they have proof quote unquote is a pedophile online didn't start out by calling the SWAT team. They started out by sending hate notes and then doxing and then calling jobs and then the SWAT team. It is a progression line. And I think that that is an important thing to highlight that it isn't just, oh, this is, it doesn't just start with beating your wife. It doesn't just start at the extreme. It starts at allowing yourself to send that, that send message. Mm-hmm. Indeed and- it does. We are all guilty of it. Like, and that's something I need to continue to highlight through this. And I feel that it's important that we have at all times exhibited abusive behavior. No one is, no one is saved from that. We no can one's be immune. No, nope. we can be victims. We could have, we could have suffered from abuse ourselves, but we have as a result of our society and having to live in this world, abused people ourselves. Yep, which is a big reason why we are insisting on the content warning today, because we yeah. know that no matter how pure um, you are or how good your intentions, that we're probably going to say something that you're like, shit, I've done that. And if, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. no, <laughs> and I if am the bad not, guy. And if you are not in a position to hear that, that is okay. I think you should try to be. But if you're not, then accept it. We're not going to not talk about it. And it's still the truth, whether you yeah, want to so- hear it or not. <laughs> So with that being okay. said, um, before we before we kind of get farther, I want to I want to jump to this uh, kind of positive one. So how do we prevent some of that oh, abuse? Yes. Since we're all abusers, um, how in in some form or fashion, how do we prevent it when we see it? Well, I will say, be careful. You know, I don't think that necessarily everyone is an abuser, but like you said, exhibiting those abusive behaviors. And yes, sorry, I, abusive behaviors, yeah, no. not necessarily because yeah, yeah. they don't necessarily have the beliefs to to they back it yeah. up. Yeah, and it's and it's, it's all about it's all about like longstanding patterns. But um, one of the things that I, I do want to argue is that preventing abuse has to take on some of the same strategies as preventing sexual assault. Like you know, everybody has you know heard, I, or at least listener, if you haven't heard the phrase rape culture, it basically refers to the the idea that um, sexual assault is justified societally and that the victims of the assault are often blamed for it or held responsible by not making, quote, the correct choices, unquote, to preempt that violence. Uh, but that actually doesn't change uh, or affect the perpetrators because if you're heck bent on doing something or if that is your mindset then sooner or later you you will find a victim and it ha- we have to change the mindsets of the people the actual perpetrators to some degree we have to confront them as communities and we have to see the bad behavior within ourselves and reform that we have to be asking like do i support abuse 
abusive behavior? Have I committed behavior that could be abusive? And how am I holding myself accountable? Like just teaching people how to just spot abuse and throw people out. It doesn't actually like get at the deeper roots of it. Like you might like, you know, you, you kick somebody out of your community, but do they understand what they did wrong? Do they even know huh. why it's wrong? Like, did you sit in silence and kind of condone the abusive behavior until it just reached your personal point of discomfort? Like, you were okay with some of the milder stuff because, like, oh, you know, whatever. But, like, then it reaches a point. Like, that person does not understand necessarily, like, oh, why, oh, why this was bad and uh, this wasn't. Yeah. So I we have to go on. No, I was just going to say, and I think that, like, that's every self-help perspective right when it comes down to improving yourself you can only control yourself so of course the best way to solve this problem is to look inwards and is to encourage other people to look inwards and educate them on what that behavior looks like because you're right getting rid of one bad branch on the tree doesn't mean the tree is not toxic or poisoned um, and it's, it's the same, like you see that everywhere where we talk, when we talk about problematic issues within, uh, cultures that have already been developed is that you can't just cut off things and hope that the roots aren't poisoned. <laughs> yeah. And I think when it comes to online, um, spaces, a, a, a good way to think about this is if you've ever been in a space that just bans people or kicks people and doesn't tell them why, then, uh, that's probably not helping as far as stopping the cycle of abuse. If you are going to remove someone from your space because they've done something horrible or abusive or whatever, you still owe it to them to at least help them try to understand why. Now, whether you'll be able to get through to them or not, like that's a whole other question. But if you are running communities, if you're running spaces, um, you know, if you if you're even if you're one on one role playing and you're cutting someone out of your your role play life, like I think it is still on us to tell people why we are no longer going to talk to them anymore or why we're kicking them out of our communities or why they're banned or whatever the case may be and that and way at least they have an opportunity to try to not do it in the future because they know this behavior was bad and this is what got me kicked out and that is an important thing to that second half i think is also important to highlight because it's not necessarily the why is not giving an opportunity for the person to correct their behavior, to come back in, to justify their actions. It's not doing that. It's letting them know the reasoning of your decision, but still holding true to your boundaries so that in the future, someone can change their thoughts or actions, not necessarily to let them change their thoughts and actions for you. Um, like, I, I just wanna highlight that because I think it's important that if you are not you're not fitting in with someone or there is whatever reason you don't want to include this person in your life anymore. You, they, you are not responsible for giving them an opportunity to prove that they can be in your life. Um, but you are, I think, responsible for giving them an explanation as to why they're not in your life anymore. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that, um, I don't think that there's the, anything that we're saying here. I, I hope this is not giving the impression that we're saying you shouldn't have boundaries. If oh, somebody yeah. if somebody abuses you, you don't have to continue to be friends with them, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And, and I know that that is actually an abuse tactic, which we'll talk about specific behaviors later. That is an abuse tactic for abusers to say like, well, you have to forgive me now because I apologize and I'm going to change. Like, no, they can do better on the next person. And that's appropriate. And I also, yeah, and I, and I, and I wanted to say that specifically because, yes, we're not sitting here and saying don't have boundaries. But I also recognize that for a lot of people, you were never really taught how to build boundaries um, so that there is a difference. And you can sit there and say, I don't want you in my life, but also not just ghost them or not just like cut them off completely. That there is a balance that you can do. And some people deserve that. Mm -hmm. Not everyone. but Most people do. Um, and then I think that also leads into that, like, this next part is that not everyone can be or wants to be rehabilitated. 
Yeah. So, um, Sasha, I would I would love your thoughts on that one because yeah. I know that one's a, a particular um, sticking point in this conversation. Like, what do you do with the people that can't or don't want to be rehabilitated? What does that look like in these situations? Because we do encounter that sometimes. You tell somebody, hey, we're banning you because of this, that, and the other, and they're like, no, nah, what I did was cool, actually. Yeah, so uh, one of the things I've, I've had many, many, many arguments uh, online and in person, and one of the things I've had to learn, this is hard for me, I thought if I could explain things perfectly to people, that this would cause them to magically get it, like, when I said it. Like, all I had to do was, like, lay out the logic, and people would be like, ah, I see your superior rationality, and I will eject all of my prior <laughs> beliefs. Don't laugh at me. This was hard for me, Lansing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just, it's, it's a very you lesson, because yeah. I love you. You are so smart. <laughs> <laughs> but I also have the advantage of, of not having a very strong emotional attachment to a lot of my beliefs. Like, just they're, they're much lower than a lot of other people's, which means when I get confronted with being, like, horribly wrong, I do feel bad, but I don't feel, I think, the crippling kind of bad that other people feel. Like, it's going to ruin maybe my day, but you uh, maybe a week, but, like, definitely not a month or my life. Like, I'm just going to... I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, you told me I was terrible, but I have a 10-step plan to not be terrible now. So thank you for that. I will be back to get my gold sticker. Like, most people aren't like that. So, yeah, that's I, that, I give, I'll give you a gold star, Sasha. I'll give you thank one. You. <laughs> thank you. But most people are not me. It's a shocker. But, like, when you confront somebody about something as emotional as the fact that they are not a good person, because that's the gist of it. I don't believe in good and bad people for the record, but when you come to somebody and you're like, what's up? You thought you were an okay person. You thought your behavior was okay. You thought that you were the good guy. And in fact, you are the bad guy. Like that is, takes a lot to hear. And often if you are confronting somebody on your own, that's usually not enough influence in a lot of cases, unless like, uh, like barring a, a, a strong emotional connection with that person and there is a chance that they like do actually respect you and they're going to be willing to like listen to what you're saying like those like a lot of times you are going to get blown off that does not exempt you from like clearly explaining what the person did wrong and why but understand that you might just be like a link in the chain of explaining something to somebody that they're going to be like I was kicked out of this space for this reason, and this is what they told me, and, you know, if they continue to get thrown out of the concert for punching people, like, they might, you know, you know, point themselves as a victim, like, you know, I'm just moshing like everybody else, and, you know, for some reason, people are just picking on me. You're going to get that kind of woe is me behavior, but sometimes you are just a part of the process, and that is okay. Yeah, you are not, especially, uh, and I, I very much understand where you're coming from, Sasha, because I also have that habit of being like, well, if I just explain myself well enough and get someone to understand the different perspective, they will magically understand that I am right and that uh, what I am saying is superior. And it doesn't work like that. That you are, sometimes you will say something that might open up something, but you also might not. Uh, and it's not necessarily your responsibility when explaining things to, for someone else to understand. Uh, it is, I think, part of, at least in my view, your responsibility to like educate or at least pass on information. So telling someone why you don't want to have them in your life anymore or something like that. Uh, it is your responsibility to do that, but it is not your responsibility that they understand and process that uh, reasoning. Yeah, and one thing I wanna I wanna say here as well is that the average adult has to be exposed to a piece of information six times before they internalize it. And that's averages upon averages, right? Averages of type of information, averages of adults, da 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 da. So of course it's gonna be more than that when you're talking about somebody being told that what they did was abusive or what they did was like so inappropriate that they're being removed from the situation now or whatever, whatever, right? So yeah. if you think about that like you're probably not going to change their mind. And if you do change their mind, it's probably because you're like the 10th person that's told them the same thing and they're finally ready to hear it, you know, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to tell them because even if you're person number one that that's telling them this thing, you know, that's still that first step that has to happen. 
And you want to take those opportunities because for a lot of people, those opportunities don't happen because we just are so focused on the, the retribution and that type of justice, right? So if you have an opportunity to, to explain to someone why you're removing them from your space, I, I do think it's important to do that, even if they fight you the whole way, even if they clearly don't understand, like it doesn't matter because it's not about that one specific situation. It's about giving them the opportunity later. Yeah. I also think that when talking about um, people who who do not want to or can't be re rehabilitated, um, also discussing, and, and Sasha made this great point too in, um, in the outline, that there are some cultures online where uh, where it is out of your hands and you are not going to be able to change anything. Uh, and therefore it is not worth your time to explain. So the, the, the idea that came up to me was uh, girl gamers playing video games. Uh, you, you will not change by yourself the narrative of how men treat women when gaming. Um, so it might just not be worth trying to explain to some groups of men why they shouldn't be sexist pigs. Um, and that sometimes it's just better to block, to block and move on. Um, and that exists in the RP world as well. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, think that's, that's a little bit unique to online. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sasha. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I agree. Like when, you, when you're dealing with, you know, behavior like that, like, or if you get targeted by a, a mass harassment campaign, God help you listener. But, like, at that point, you are not, you know, please do not feel like you need to explain yourself to, like, the horde that is attacking you. That will, that has never worked. That, unfortunately, has never worked. This is more about, like, handi handling abusive individuals within your community as opposed to taking on a collective of abusive people, as Landon said, like, you know, a group of groups of men harassing female streamers, or like I said, a, a group of people harassing somebody. Like, you know, just like a particular blog. If you're up against the collective, do not waste your time. Mm -hmm. But if if it is like a one person in your community, then you have a, a much yeah, I think a higher obligation to kind of explain yourself because you also have a, a better chance of getting through. You're not going to get through to a horde, but you might possibly get through to one person. Absolutely. And it is that difference between the one and the many. Um, it, it, is, it is near impossible for one person to change many minds at the same time, but it is very possible for one person to change one mind. Um, and that you do have that opportunity and you can do it. Uh, but just know that when it is many, there are, it is safe to sit there and be like, I don't need to do this yeah. <laughs> and just eat out. So like if the turfs have found you on Twitter or if the aunties have found you on Twitter or whatever, like you don't need to take them on. You can just hit block until they go away. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> can I get a mod to ban that yep, mod in the chat, please? Thank y'all. <clears throat> Yeah, so don't feel like that we're that we're saying that you need to explain yourself to a horde. You absolutely, one hundred percent, do not. Um, we're just talk. We're talking about instances where it's like one on one role play or um, an individual that you're removing from your your group or your server or whatever. Like that's that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I also think an important part is to, and, and we kind of touched on this before, but don't harass the person that you're blocking. Like, don't abuse the abuser. <laughs> um, like, and I, I don't know, Sasha, if you want to talk more on this because a lot of this is your notes, but um, if you're going to just, like, block somebody or disengage from somebody, don't then try to re-engage. Um, because that is almost a shift in power. Like, especially if they can't talk to you or you can't, they can't reach out to you to have a conversation or to have communication and just like spamming them why they're terrible is not, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, no, this is, this is a, this is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> like, I, th I think I already kind of went over this point, but 
oh my god, it's so tacky when, like, people start, like, reaching out about their bands. Like, I've had it, I've had this happen to me, and it was so humiliating. Like, it served no purpose. I was ban- I, this is one of the bands I talked about where I was just like, actually, I was kind of an annoying shithead, and they ginned up a, a superficial reason to kind of get rid of me. And then they go around and they're like, we need to talk about Sasha. You do not. You just don't like me, and you don't need to go telling other people about it. Like, there are going to be plenty of members who just don't fit in your community that, for whatever reason, you don't like or they commit some modest harm. Like, harm is bad, but that does not justify you, like, creating equal harm, like, adding more harm to the world by, you know, going out and punishing people. And that was the thing. Like, I had already, like, experienced the consequence. I was annoying. I got kicked out. Like, behavior, consequence. But the thing was, is that then there was the desire to punish me. Like, apparently it wasn't satisfactory enough to like have me leave like and that is the thing like that just don't do that like and don't go around talking a bunch of trash because people like as karen said how are people supposed to like learn something and change if you exile them from every social situation where they will have the opportunity to try and do better like Mm -hmm. that's that's not how things work in the real world and i will say this i think that Sometimes people are so poisoned by what they feel is the lack of justice in the world, where they feel like there is such a lack of equality and hope, and that it feels like there are no consequences for people that commit harm, that they do get these ideas into their head where, like, if I can't have these things in, like, in the real world, then I can at least have this hit of power online and i understand how that is tempting i understand how you can get really jaded to the point of being like well if i can't if, you know if these things aren't going to happen in the world at large i can at least make things different online i can make sure that people get punished because nobody that ever hurt me was punished i think is the mindset and it's like i i empathize with that emotional space but it's not right yeah, I also think that there is this abs- uh, assumption that justice uh, feels good. Um, that that justice means that you are going to be emotionally... Like, if you're emotionally hurt by something, there's this idea in our head that justice means that that hurt is going to be satisfied. And it's not. Um, <laughs> like, justice doesn't mean... Do- justice is so cold and analytic like the truest form of what justice represents is supposed to be so cold and analytic that emotion is supposed to have nothing to do with it (coughs) excuse me that is that is the ideal and Um, yeah and what feels good isn't necessarily right yeah so like attaching this emotional satisfaction to the rule of judgment or of justice is is how we set ourselves up to fail and how we then continue this like abuse cycle because all of a sudden you're not satisfied with the justice that has been served but you have this idea that you are supposed to be satisfied yep um i think a really good example of how this manifests online that we probably all seen at one time or another is um is in a lot of queer spaces online we do this where instead of attacking the homophobes and the transphobes and the power structures that that create the homophobia and everything that that hurts us um instead we go after fellow queers who aren't what we consider the pure kind you know um like maybe they're into kinky stuff and that's just bad or you know whatever they're into problematic or they're fiction and not yeah they're bisexual and not actually gay and right all that right stuff. like that comes up too like a lot of people are like well you haven't picked you know you got to be full gay like oh my god and it's just and stuff like that and you see that online a lot and i know that's where it comes from it comes from a place of like i have been hurt i have been marginalized i can't do anything about the people that actually hurt me but i can tell by people that their existence um contributes to my marginalization and that makes me feel good and better about it 
Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, yeah, no, that's not, that's not how it works. Um, but yeah, it is that idea of, of justice isn't gonna make you feel good. So like, stop thinking that it will. <laughs> yeah. That'll, that'll help you look inwards to, to help with your possible like dissatisfaction at what happens. There have been times where like as a mod in an RP, I, we've had members who have been incredibly toxic to our community. Um, and the day that they leave doesn't feel good. It, it's not supposed to, or the day that we decide that they've hit three strikes or any of these things, it's not supposed to feel like a victory because it isn't a victory. It's just the reality of, of you broke the rules, so you need to go. And that's, I think, something important, especially if you're going to hold power online. Um, very well said. Huh? That's a very well said. Yeah. Thank you. I think that those are the basics that we have. Um, do we want to start talking about the abuse recipe? Yeah, yeah. um, definitely. So I, I want Sasha to take the recipe for sure. But before, before we do, um, just again, the focus here is going to be on like the beliefs and the patterns. And we are going to talk about the behaviors, but, um, and there, but there's a good chance that you have either seen or done these behaviors or participated in them or whatever, whatever, right? And the point of describing these things isn't for anybody to feel shamed if you realize that, oh, shoot, I've been the baddie, or, oh, I saw this and I just was quiet and didn't say anything or whatever. It's, it's to illustrate how these behaviors harm others as well as can poison communities at large that you might be responsible for and, and how they can kind of take a community that could have been healthy and make that impossible. So that's what we're really talking about. We're not trying to make anyone feel shame. I don't believe in shame as an education tool. I don't think it leads to long-term learning. I think it's a very short-term strategy. So um, yeah, if you're feeling that, then I apologize. That's not the intention. So with I that being think, said- oh, I also ahead. think it's important to recognize that we are also not out here, A, preaching that we've never or still don't do these things. Sometimes, um, yeah. Sometimes those behaviors happen and it's not or, like intentional, but you know, it does happen. Yeah. Or that a perfect society would exist without any of these things happening. I personally believe that when we're talking about abuse and the bigger aspects of our culture, that it's impossible to have a world without it. Um, just with how humans have been created and how our brains think. Um, and maybe that's a little bit depressive, or negative Nancy of me, but um, that is the way that I'm sitting here. So for me, I am not coming up from a place of preaching, this is the optimal kind of person that you're supposed to be. Um, I just think that it's important that if we recognize where our behaviors come from, we can then try to make a better world for our, or better communities for ourselves. We are all works in progress, just trying to do and better we'll than yesterday. always be a work in progress. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate, so. Mochi. And All right. She could have been there for my uh, for my prison abolition book club. We're we're really really going hard on that one. Okay, but yes. So the point is not to shame anybody. Like we do live we live in a society that promotes and justifies abuse on like macro levels, like the abuse of the environment, the abuse that is inherent in imprisoning people. Uh, the historical abuse of people of color like we we are soaked in this stuff it is not surprising that a lot of us will have internalized different parts of this and have probably had various struggles in our own interpersonal relationships with these things it's like people who are like very severely abusive are like on a spectrum of you know all of us being steep in this stuff so the point is not to you know hold ourselves up against some perfect person that exists and is doing everything right, but to just kind of see the connections between things and see the roots and see the elements of things. Because once we become conscious of these things, we have we better have the ability to intervene with ourselves and other people. So, yep. all right, here's the abuse recipe. Are you ready? Ready, folks? Uh, 
I'm ready. Let's make I some abuse cookies. With bated breath. So entitlement plus controlling behaviors equals abuse. Entitlement plus controlling behaviors equals abuse. And I'm going to break all three of those down. So entitlement is thinking you have an automatic right to something, which is for some examples, the right to get what you want when you want it. Posts, responses to your DMs, plots, uh, the right to get exactly what you want, like the exact kind of character or plot that you envision. Uh, the right to take up space, the right to have like the most important character to talk over everybody all the time, and the right to demand emotional work from others. So the right to demand that people listen to your feelings and make you feel better. So those are some examples of entitlement. Uh, controlling behavior is overt or subtle behaviors to try and force other people to do what you want. There is always there's always an element of coercion when it comes to control. You are trying to get somebody to do something that they that they don't want to do, that they are showing resistance to doing, and you are trying to override their their will. And so, uh, and then abuse is like I said, a relational dynamic where one person has power over another and exerts that power in a way that causes persistent harm to the less empowered person in order to accrue privileges to the more empowered person. So abuse is about taking advantage of a power imbalance to exploit or control someone else. So it starts with those beliefs. It starts with what you believe other people have to give to you. And when you don't get what you think you deserve, that is when the controlling behavior starts because this person is supposed to give you this thing. You are entitled to this thing. This is what you yeah. deserve. And you have the right to correct them, which is where the controlling behavior is coming. Mm -hmm. Well said. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, just just some some a couple of additional things on the entitlement we're not, I, I don't want anyone to come away thinking that that means that they're not entitled to, you know, love and affection and attention and things like that. Like you are, but this is about the belief in those like specific things. Like it's saying that I'm entitled to this person's attention. Therefore, if they choose to get obsessed with a video game instead of role playing with me for a while, that I have to do something about that, that I can't just let them be obsessed with the video game for a bit. Um, so, so, you know, I don't mean, in, we don't mean entitlement as in like basic human needs. What we mean is like making sure that those needs are met in a certain way or from a certain person. Can, I, more give like an that. Can I give an example? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my ship partner is RPing with somebody else faster than they are RPing with me on another ship. So my person is riding a ship with another person and they're RPing faster than that. So I feel that's the entitlement. I deserve that to be RP'd with as just as fast as the other person. The controlling behavior could be, so I will threaten the ship, like threaten whether or not we are going to be able to ship together. Um, if that person doesn't keep up that speed mm -hmm. with me, that would be like an example of entitlement. And then the controlling behavior of threatening the ship or something that you feel like you have a higher authority over to control that person to speak to play with you just as much yep because there's other ways you could have handled that right there's other ways you could have handled that Absolutely. feeling like talking to them and saying hey i've noticed this and it's hurting my feelings um uh -huh. can we figure out what's going on here how can we make our ship more exciting um, or so recognizing that, you know, that maybe it's just a thursday and today is is it's fine yeah <laughs> so or like, you can or go like back maybe, and forth with someone else <laughs> yeah, maybe just be patient. Like, that's another choice, too, you know? <laughs> so there were other choices that you had there to deal with that feeling that would have been much more reasonable. Yeah, or also yeah. recognizing, like, why am I feeling insecure that someone else is writing with my partner? Mm -hmm. um, because the reality is, is that that ship has nothing to do with my ship. And if there is something that I need more of, then let's talk about it. But the reality is, is like that comparative in itself is going to set you up for an entitlement position, period. <laughs> if you're comparing yourself yeah. to someone else at any point in time, you're already going to start like setting the ground rules for entitlement, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. I did want to say, like, I have a little thing here. It says that if we live in a world where cooperation and uh, mutuality are healthy, when you are in consenting relationships where you have major needs clear, other people can and will volunteer to meet them. 
for yeah. this to happen, you you both need to volunteer. You also need to volunteer to meet other people's needs. If you want someone to meet your needs, you need to be willing to meet their needs. And in healthy relationships, the needs of both parties coincide, or both parties accept equal give and take for meeting a variety of needs. But when you start asserting that your rights are more important than anyone else's, you have entered the sphere of entitlement. So, like, if, let's say Karen wants to do, like, a very specific shift, and I'm really whiny, like, we might have a trade-off where Karen is like, okay, well, Sasha's going to give me, like, exactly the plot that I want, and she's kind of going through it and needs, like, some additional hugs. Like, there's kind of a trade-off going on there. Or, like, you know, I'm posting really fast for Karen, and Karen's posting really fast for me. Like, there's a mutuality there. Yeah. Or if one of us wants something from the other person, I'm like, man, like, I want, I don't know, more plots. Like, instead of subtly trying to control Karen or pressure her or be kind of shady about it, like, going to her and being like, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I want. Will you give me what I want? And being prepared for a no. Like, you have to always mm -hmm. be prepared for the idea that other people can't or won't meet your needs and that you have to always kind of have, like, a backup plan. You have to be able to self-suit. You have to have other people that you can talk to. Sometimes you have to just be willing to be disappointed. Life, that's just how life is. It's not personal. It doesn't mean that your life is going to be miserable. It's not the end of the world. It's just the ebb and the flow. Sometimes you will be pleasantly surprised. Sometimes you'll get exactly what you want. And sometimes you'll be disappointed. And that is okay. Yeah. Especially, especially in kind of the, the through line example that we're using of like, you know, speed of replies or, um, or frequency of posting right um you have to be open when you have these conversations with people for them to be like you know i hear you but i'm super busy right now like i'm sorry i have you know the youtube channel and the and the twitch stream and i'm running my role play and i have to be active at least a little bit in the cafe and da 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 da, da and all these things and so i'm really sorry like i hear you but i don't have the mental space for that right now um you know you have to you have to understand that that might be the kind of answer that they give you uh so you know that doesn't mean don't have the conversation just know that like if they tell you no, then you need to have a backup. You need to say like, okay, so if they if Karen tells me no, then I'm gonna go post my ad in a bunch of different communities to try to find a new partner. Like maybe that's your backup plan. Or maybe your backup plan is, okay, well, I'm gonna spend more of my free time watching this new TV show that I wanted to watch anyways, or I don't know, like whatever the situation is, you have to have something that you're gonna fill that time with instead, if Karen tells you no. And I also think it's, this is just, this is an important lesson that at least took me a while to learn, but I feel that everyone at some point needs to learn, is that your satisfaction does not belong in the responsibility of other people. Other people are not responsible for you being satisfied. And I think that there is this idea that when we build relationships that there is that mutual satisfaction as far as like, oh, you make me so happy. The reality is, is that that's not their responsibility to do they can contribute to that but if you are not satisfied in something then you need to change your behavior or expectations uh and not expect somebody else to change theirs mic yep. drop <laughs> yep, for sure <laughs> um do we have anything else that we want to wanted to say on... oh sorry i didn't realize sasha was talking my bad go ahead say it say it sasha i think i talked over you my feelings are so hurt, Karen. How could you talk over me? Yeah, <laughs> no, I was, I was just, I just said that's the tea. You're good. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. I, I have to tell you, and I know that this is off topic, but I have to. Whenever Sasha just agrees with something that I said that I just feel was really passionate about, I get all sorts of butterfly bubbly inside because I'm like, Sasha is so right all the time, and it just <laughs> makes me happy. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Sasha, Thank I think you, she's man. telling you you're very smart. You are oh very smart, and your praise, uh, I appreciate your praise. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Thank you. I'm going to go uh, weep slightly over this later. Okay. But uh, thanks. <laughs> no problem. No problem. <laughs> I made it awkward. I'm valid. <laughs> what I do. So it's a, no, it's, I love it. Um, All right, we're going to get into some behaviors now. We're going to tell people some specific things they should 
not be doing. Yeah, I think that this is the part of the uh, stream that we get to piss people off. If we haven't already, yeah. I'm really impressed. But I'm like, be if prepared. you guys think this far, yeah. Yeah. I'm really I I made this to be this is possibly one of the angriest streams ever. If get you, ready to hear about stuff you did. If yeah, I'm like I part of me is also kind of like. Do we want to make this a never have I ever sort of style? Do we want to make it a drinking game at all? Or, or do we just want to like sit there and be like pretend that we've not, are not going to be wasted at the end of this? Take a shot. Uh, Every I... time we say a behavior that you've done in the past, um, we'll all be trashed. <laughs> yes. Like a shot of wheatgrass, like a shot of, I don't know, lemon juice, a I'm shot of decaffeinated I'm, coffee. I'm, I'm on my second coffee already, so I'll be done do with it by the time we make it through. Do not do this with any actually strong beverage because if you are, I don't know, like any kind of normal person who has possibly had a deeply emotional, depressive phase in your life, you're going to be like, cool, 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 cool. But again, the point of this is not to shame. This is just, it's good to know what these things are so you can not do them ever again. Or when you see them, you know what's going on. Yep. Yes, yep, absolutely. So, um, so again, we've said, had disclaimers throughout, but I just want to make this clear. Um, one behavior in isolation isn't meaningful to determining if someone has beliefs that are leading to abuse. Hopefully everything that we've set up until this point helps you guys understand that. So what we're talking about when it comes to these behaviors is a pattern and totality of behavior. And before we get into it, I want to get on my soapbox for a second and say Ooh. some things that are not abuse that the RP community likes to say sometimes are. Are you if ready you've done this, for- you can drink for this too. <laughs> Just for those playing at home. Are we ready? These are behaviors that are actually fine and oh, just annoying, not abusive. All right, my first one. No one should be surprised that watches my content. Ghosting, okay? <gasps> you think ghosting is okay? <laughs> actually, yes. Um, while it's polite <laughs> to tell people, uh, you know, why you're going to stop responding to them, and it's definitely something you should do, and it's definitely something that I think if you don't do, you're you know hurting your own communication skills, da 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 da. I've talked about it before. Y'all know how I feel about ghosting. It is actually not abusive or that big of a deal. No one that ghosted you abused you. I'm sorry, that's just not a thing. Well, they the reason didn't they ghosted you probably had nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, ghosting, annoying, not abusive. Okay. Related. Related, but different. Blocking. Okay, oh, people are allowed to define their boundaries. And if you're not leaving them alone, they're allowed to block you. Okay, now, um, <laughs> is every block, is every block justified? It's, it, yeah, no, not every block is justified. Are some blocks annoying as hell? <laughs> yes, it's super annoying when somebody blocks you and you realize that you didn't get the chance to like work this work it out with this person. Yep. It sucks, but it's not abusive. It's, it's just not. someone defining their boundaries using a tool of the online space to do so. And <laughs> so I'm going to pause I'm going to pause right there cuz I'm sure you all want to comment on ghosting and blocking. <laughs> oh, I'm fine with ghosting. Blocking is annoying. Um but blocking is useful. Um especially if it's helping you set your boundaries um i think that if you're blocking people for specific reasons communication is always appreciated however if there is things that either trigger you or make you upset or things like and i'm talking just on the bigger scheme of things like if there is particular tiktoks that you don't want to see there is a not interested slash block button for a reason um mm -hmm the internet isn't meant to cater to your particular needs and wants and tastes. And if you want to create a space that you feel safer in, then using those tools available to you to either block people or content that you do not feel safe with is totally okay because it is your responsibility to do that. Um, as someone who has been on the receiving end of a few blocks, um, it sucks <laughs> to just be blocked out of the blue, but I understand it. And I get it. And it's fine. That's all yeah. I have to say. Oh, 
I'll say the one exception with ghosting is like when you are ghosted by someone that you have an actual relationship with. Mm. Like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe person that you're forming, like that you're trying to hammer out a role play with, or like you're not really friends with. And you maybe have been writing for a couple of months, and they just kind of go away. Like that, that that sucks. But again, that's not personal. If Karen ghosts me, I have your phone number. See, <laughs> that's that's the difference, though. I don't think that that's ghosting. I think that that's abandonment, and abandonment yeah, yeah. and ghosting are two different things. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> that's very very well said. And yeah, as for blocking, like one of the things I want to remind people is that the internet is a public space. Yeah, kind of like a park or like a town square. Like you see people walking around outside where you don't like their outfits, or people protesting something that you may or may not agree with but it's like a public space and you don't get to like i don't know go out and like pepper spray all the people protesting or supporting a politician because you don't like them like but you you do get to look away so i think that's that's important to keep in mind like you're gonna run into people that you don't want to see or things you don't want to see you can you can block it and move on and if you are blocked like that is that other person is allowed to do that even though it can feel unfair or hurtful that's just it's just not something that you can control and we do have to respect other people's right to make bad decisions yep. <laughs> Sometimes. yeah lunar i i do actually believe that right so lunar has a comment um why was i thinking karen was going to say it's polite to tell people to, to f off i do think it's polite to tell people to fuck off actually instead of just blocking them but <laughs> Sometimes you do what you got to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, um, tell, them, tell them to F off to their face. That's, you know, I do think that's, thing to do. I, I do think that that's better to tell them, you know, please stop contacting me than, than to block them. But sometimes sometimes you've tried and it doesn't work. Sometimes that's not appropriate for one reason or another. Da 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 da, like whatever, whatever. Like we, we'd have to get into specifics to get into that. The point is, is that when someone blocks you, that may suck and it may be annoying, but it's not abusive. Yep. And that's, and it's again, that thing that Sasha brought up in the very beginning, that you feeling uncomfortable about a situation is not equate e abuse. Yep. And it does not even equate harm. Not necessarily. I mean, it might be something that they shouldn't own. have done. It might be something they shouldn't have done, but that doesn't mean what they did was bad. Those are two different yep. things. Yep. Exactly. All right. Couple of other right. behaviors, a couple other behaviors that um, people like to call abusive, but they're not. First one, not being online often. People are allowed to define how they spend their time. And like someone, even if somebody tells you that they're online every day and then it turns out that they were wrong about themselves and they're not, like that's frustrating and it's annoying and it might be worth talking to them about, but it's not abusive, right? Yeah. So this happens, I think, sometimes online where people have mismatched expectations of like, how frequently people should be role playing, how frequently they should be checking in with their partners, things like that. And um, and so if somebody just doesn't sign online for a few days, they might feel slighted. Like, well, this person promised me and da 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 da. And it's like, well, okay, but something came up. You're not privy to everything going on in their life. What they did is not necessarily abusive. You have no idea why they did it until they come back and if they choose to tell you. So that behavior, not abusive. Again, annoying. Probably situations where they shouldn't do it, but it's not abusive. And very much related I, to oh, that. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I also want to expand on that in just a little bit is um, I have also seen accusations of people who change their status as far as like, because like on Discord, there's the ability to say whether you're invisible or away or online, um, <laughs> who, who change their status or hide their status as to being online or not, that is also not abusive. Oh, like God, no. I have seen people be very angry about the fact that it'd be like, oh, well, it says you're not online and you're replying. Like it, that's not an abusive behavior. They're not trying to avoid you. That's, and then if they are, that's also not an abusive behavior. Yeah, it's just like kind of crappy for them to, you know, do that instead of explain themselves, but it's not abusive. Yep, I just needed to clarify that on there. Yeah, yeah. And I think other platforms have similar stuff. Um, but related to the, the frequency of being online, we've talked, used this as an example a couple of times, but I just want to reiterate here, um, this one won't be a surprise, but giving some partners more attention than others, again, not abusive. 
everybody has favorites it is natural it is human is it annoying when you realize that the the favoritism you feel for someone is not actually mutual yes that is really annoying and it can really hurt when you when the person that's your favorite is not they're not your, you're not their favorite back right like that sucks um i'm sure we have all experienced that however it's not abusive um and a lot of times we don't necessarily control uh how we feel about other people and who we decide to really strongly bond with it's 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 chemical right it kind of just happens <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's that's not something that is abusive. Again, just like all of these other behaviors, sometimes what they're doing is wrong. Sometimes it's hurtful. Sometimes, you know, it's it's annoying or frustrating, but it's not abusive. You know, it doesn't it doesn't meet the um, abuse formula because they're not doing it from a place of entitlement. They're not doing it from a place of false beliefs. They're just playing favorites, which is a natural thing that humans do. All right, so that's the not, that's the not um, abuse, abusive behaviors, <laughs> just to get those out of the way. Um, do you have anything to add to that before we move um, to the next ones? No, I mean, not really. I think that giving partners more attention than you is is pretty umbrella like because it also follows as far as like being closer not just like as more attention in in the rp world but also being closer as friends um i think that, that is an important thing too especially when if you join a community trying to make friends other people having friends is not an abusive situation <laughs> yeah i guess that's kind of similar to like clicks are not abusive um in fact, <laughs> in fact, you being upset about it might be the abusive situation. I mean, it depends or on your behaviors. That. It Depending on, on what behaviors your behaviors result. Is, and we're going to yeah. like that first one that you're going to touch on when we go into the red flag behavior. Uh, yeah, yeah. So okay. All right. So who wants to get us started then on some of those red flag behaviors? So, so these know. are not necessarily abusive, right? They're just like, maybe you should watch out. I'm a walking red flag, so I feel it it's uh on point and brand for me <laughs> thank you for laughing at that joke it was, it was funny it was thank funny. you um jealousy and possessiveness getting like cutely jealous about your other role players or ships so if you are a person who is like um hawkeye watching um and like almost vaguely threatening other your partners other ships or other characters that 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 your ship people have interactions with uh it can be a little a little other red flag side it can be a little like oh that's no cute jealousy is still jealousy <laughs> possessiveness is still possessiveness did you guys want to add anything to that or keep going Oh no, I was I was thinking Sasha would probably add something. Because I had talked for a lot. Nope. Sasha, did you want to add anything to that? Uh yeah, no, just those are all pretty much the truth. Like these are things where they can feel like, I don't know, positive attention with like the jealousy or you know, rushing you to post. It feels like, oh my god, they must really want to see what I'm writing. But actually like this attention that can feel flattering can be like this is a tip like especially if you know like i said if they're if you do the same things like you rush them and suddenly they get defensive yeah i think that's such a good way to put it like sometimes some of these red flag behaviors can feel like positive attention and I do think that jealousy is a good example of that. You know, um, if they're encouraging you to just write with them and, and neglect all others, like that can feel really nice when it's happening, but well, it might potentially be a red flag behavior. Yeah, especially if it's that cute jealousy. Like that's yeah. the other thing too, is the cute jealousy is very um, hidden. And because I think that the jealousy and possessiveness, uh, there are levels to it so it, the higher and more it goes the more abusive it becomes in my mind at least um so that low level um can can feel very positive because it, it it's disguised as something positive mm -hmm. right it's disguised as positive attention and it's not really the base underlying is coming from a place of of control and possessiveness mm -hmm. 
like if you're going on and on about like some other ship that you have that's not with this person and, and then the person is like oh but what about our ship together like you know the yeah. instinct is to, to be like oh yeah i do want to talk positively about our ship together and oh this person you know it feels really positive about our ship and so it feels good but depending on what their underlying beliefs are that are causing them to say that it might not be good that they did that yeah, or being like, oh, man, I was really hoping that we would be able to, I'm going to throw this out, Brie, but you're not this kind of person, um, <laughs> to really, like, expand Rory and Jim's, and I've been noticing that you've been RPing a lot of other things, but, like, said in a very, like, public way, said in a very, like, oh, poor me, I was really hoping this thing way, like, not necessarily asking or, or defining what it is you need, but more, like, trying to play on the emotions of another person. Um, that's like a cute, cute jealousy that is like hiding that behavior mm -hmm. um sorry to just like yeet brie under the bus there it's totally not her but i was like that that's the that's the couple i'm writing today so well i assume she dm'd you that so it wasn't really public or anything like yeah. that so no she definitely was just like actually you've been a terrible partner and i'm feeling completely neglected and no she she was great <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, double standards. So um, there are many kinds of double standards, but one would be like rushing you to post and then getting annoyed if you ask them to post mm -hmm. um, or them being like, yeah, I mean that, that, oh my God, it takes so long for you to post. And then uh, you waiting seven days for a reply. Mm -hmm. But consistently, like not just like, oh, my God, you replied and then uh, something in my life happened and I had to take care of it. Like this is a I want all the replies, but I'm going to make you wait for me sort of red flag. Um, complaining excessively about past partners uh, mysteriously has had a lot of bad experiences that were never their fault. Listen, this is a red flag in any relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, <laughs> if you were a person who, um, who like whose partner constantly complains about their crazy ex girlfriends or things like that, uh, same sort of energy comes with a RP partner. And if you have someone who's just complaining and everyone else seems to be the crazy ones around them, ninety percent of the time they're the crazy ones. Just, just gonna say that. It sucks, but it's kind of true, right? Like if they have a gajillion stories about all of their other role play partners and how their other role play partners have wronged them in the past, and and they're like willingly sharing these stories with you when you're very first getting to know them, um, I take that as a red flag because it's like. I don't know to me like those are like level four friendship conversations <laughs> not level one like why are you telling me this why do you want this to be your first impression you know what i mean so um i yeah. i definitely get very weary of of having that type of conversation with somebody early on in the in the friendship and in kind of the role play partnership um you know everybody has crazy role play partner stories but maybe those yes. aren't like the things to share on the proverbial first date <laughs> Yeah, no, um, and, and especially if it's, like, the crazy, the crazy stories are not crazy. Like, if it's things, if it's small things, like, oh, they just didn't RP enough, or, like, they just ghosted me out of nowhere, or all these things. Like, I'm not talking, like, I mean, you shouldn't talk about past partners anyway, but, or at least on the first time, but like sitting there and being like, oh no, that's a crazy story versus that's just a normal behavior. <laughs> like that happens too. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I've heard that before. Somebody tells, tells a crazy story and it's like, wait, so you're saying that they ghosted you after the first yeah. interaction? And it's like, oh, um. um okay. <laughs> well, because that just goes to show that like they are willing to think that that they have done nothing wrong in any situation um mm -hmm, potentially if they're also willing to like sell out people or situations like that potentially yes potentially for sure potentially yeah <clears throat> um coming on very strong and friendly in the very beginning uh it's so hard i want to preface this one by saying that like online interaction is hard especially if you haven't had a lot of practice um but coming on really strong and being like, we're going to be best friends forever. And we're going to write for the next six years together. 
uh, right off the bat gives the same uh, energy as showing up to the first date and already having the wedding planned. Uh, same energy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Sasha, I feel like you probably have some comments on this particular one. Because um, I know... I... I know it's one of those things because I've fallen for this too. You know, I've fallen for this and, um, you know, believed people when they, they said that they were going to be around forever and then they weren't. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> and now I feel like um, that I've, that I have, uh, I've changed a lot of that. And if somebody's coming on too strong now, I'm a little bit more like, okay, and just be patient with them and like, just see if it works out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah. Oh, I'll let Sasha talk if she wants to talk. I also don't want to force Sasha to talk. <laughs> no, just sorry for the minor distraction. Um, my chat box on my website just blew up because I actually was like, this is a no witch hunting zone and I have fucking 35 people sitting online freaking the fuck out of me. It's fucking oh, no. All right, you deal with your thing. No, no, but I, I am here to talk. So I went, I'm coming on very strong and friendly in the beginning. Oh, I've experienced this red flag. And what can I say? I love attention. And I love when people seem to like really get me. I'm like, oh, we vibe. That's so cool. But I have had my ass handed to me in the past by doing this. Like, it can feel nice when you're lonely to have somebody that's like giving you all of this attention all of a sudden, especially if you're kind of at a low point in your life, which I was not in the best place when this happened to me. But like, these kind of people like that aren't willing to build the relationship or just want the relationship instantly like you're building a house on sand like it feels good but the foundations are not there and so you should be wary like what does this person really want from you because they apparently don't want to like build things over time That's yeah it. I, I mean it's, it's very obvious I think that if some like kind of like my wedding metaphor as far as like you're looking for a placeholder. Um, you're not looking at me as a human being. You're looking at me as because you need a friend, because you need an RP partner, because you need this thing or that thing. And you have no clue of who I really am. So uh, that's weird because <laughs> I'm not a placeholder. I'm a very complicated and somewhat needy individual. Um, so <laughs> please don't like pretend I'm something I'm not. <laughs> Um, Ty has a question. Any tips on figuring out if you're being too friendly? Um, I, I think it's tough. I think it's a little bit tough, right, Ty? Because uh, online and especially in role play, it's unique in the way of, you know, we're sharing writing together in a role play context um, is a very intimate hobby to share with strangers online. It's just, it, it's just kind of part of it. So you might genuinely feel these really strong emotions towards a new role play partner. Um, but I think what when I see people coming on too friendly, typically the way that I experience it that, that gets me a little bit nervous is when people want to interact a lot in DMs and not in public spaces where other people can see. And that to me is the reason why that feels so threatening to me is because that's how people have, um, you know, gotten to me before and, uh, and, and, you know, done things and said things that were not, um, that were not cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it ended up bad for me, you know. So I think that one tip that I can provide is that if you really feel strongly about somebody, you know, and you have the the ability to interact with them publicly a bunch, then um, keep your interactions public for a bit before you kind of slide into the DM, so that you are establishing that connection in a little bit more of a safe space than um, than than the DMs, which can kind of feel like cornering someone at a party and not letting them mingle. Um, I hope that helps. That's my personal experience with it and what helps. And thank you so much for the follow, Soggy Lens. Yeah. I assume that is Jane. <laughs> also, I think that there is this um, expectation. Like, if you come in with an entitlement to somebody's time right off the bat, and I know we've talked about that a lot, but I think that that is an example of being too friendly. Mm -hmm. um, an entitlement of a relationship, an entitlement that they'll like you, an entitlement to, like, a dedicated back and forth, all of those things in a kind of positive, like, oh my God, be my friend manner, come, I think are like the ingredients that exist in being too friendly. Mm -hmm. um, if you're being kind and considerate and just wants to get to know somebody, that's very different 
than being too over the top of, oh, I will do anything for you because I've just met you. Like that's, or, or like, because you're giving me attention. Like that's very different. Yeah. Or like, like this happens, um, this happens in the YouTube space. So, but, uh, but I think it's relevant here. So I'm going to mention it. Like people emailing me offering to do editing work for free and I don't know who they are and I, they've never joined my discord server or any, or commented on a video or anything. They're just suddenly in my inbox offering to do free work. Maybe it is genuine. May, I mean, maybe it is, but, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like, what are, like, what do they want? Like, why are they offering to do all this free labor yeah. for me when they've not spent any time getting to know me outside of watching my content? And I, and I know realistically a lot of this comes from a place of wanting connection, wanting to get to that spot, but they're, but friendships are developed over time. Relationships mm -hmm. are developed over time. Um, whether we want to go right off the bat or not, it takes time, which means that if you are expecting to have a relationship with this person, then be able to put on the break breaks. Um, wait, you know, just wait, just and be able to have that break because you have all the time in the world. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to do the first, you know, three weeks or three months worth of getting to know someone in the first three hours. Yeah. Um, it's and okay I think for it to take time. Yeah, and I think that that's where the too friendly comes up. Yeah. Yeah, so All I right. think that helps, Ty. <clears throat> yeah. Um, controlling or intimidating. Uh, wants to know where you are, what you're doing, threatens to quit the role play or ship when irritated. Um, let me... <laughs> this also gives off the same energy of when you're in grade school. Like, you know, second, first grade when you're still playing make-believe Sailor Moon. Not that I've experienced this before. Um, but that like someone just rage quits because they don't get to be Sailor Earth. Um, that, that is the same sort of energy as the controlling and intimidating of, I'm going to just stop writing and replying if you don't do this thing mm -hmm. or if you don't give me time. Like that's, that's the same energy and kind of what that is about. <laughs> yeah. And this can, and this can be, this one's a little bit of a challenge, I think, because when it comes to these behaviors, sometimes people setting normal boundaries can feel like they're being controlling or intimidating. Like we talked about before, blocking mm -hmm. is not abusive, actually. Um, but when someone blocks you, it can feel like they're trying to be controlling or intimidating. So this is one of those ones where um, you actually kind of can't go with your gut. You can't go with your feelings. Uh, you have to really look at the behavior. Is, is someone actually like saying, if you continue to do these normal things, I'm going to do this bad thing here. Like, are they actually saying that? Are are they um, are they enacting a character bleed onto onto the characters as a as a way to control you of how they feel? Um, you know, you have to be very objective, I think, and and critical of what you're actually seeing and what the behaviors actually are to determine if someone is being controlling or intimidating. I personally believe that if anyone at any point in time says that if you continue to do this behavior, not anyone or any time, that was a lot. But for the most part, if someone's going to sit there and say, if you keep doing this, I am going to block you, um, I personally feel is, is a control thing. If it has to do with like RP stuff. Um, I'm not talking about like, if you continue to DM me at this, I am going to block you. Or if you continue to try to communicate, I am going to block you. I'm, I'm more talking about like, if you keep responding to this person, I am going to block you. Or if you keep um, not, if you keep not writing the way I want you to, I am going to block you. Yeah, it, like, I mean, it, it really that... depends. It really depends because I think blocking yeah. can be a really effective tool to assert your boundaries for somebody that's not listening. But I think I the think better way to handle it is just to say, this is my boundary and just keep repeating that. And then if it gets ignored, block. Like you never have to tell yes. them that you're going to do the block. Just just do it. And I know? think that that is what makes it intimidating and controlling is the threat of it. It's not the act of it. It is not enabling your boundaries. It is if you tell if you tell a person that you they are going to block you, that's kind of like telling this person, uh, if you do this thing, I will hit you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like just just. No, sit there and say, my boundary is this. And if they don't listen to it, then block them. Don't yeah. sit there and say, I will block you if you do this. Because that yeah. is controlling. 
Um, and I know that's very nitpicky, but I think that threatening in itself is the intimidation part. Um, either do it or don't do it. Decide what your boundary is on your own term. Don't let anybody else, like, apply your boundary. Sit there and say, I don't appreciate when you do this. Please stop. Um, and if they don't listen to it, then follow through on the consequence of that action. Don't threaten the consequence or punishment of that action based off of them not having anything before that. Yeah, and I think what Bree says really builds on that. Um, she's saying she had this happen a lot on Tumblr RP, especially when these people admit that they're never going to actually stop writing with me or quit our ship. They just wanted my attention. So like yes. she experienced that where they said they were going to block her. They said they were going to stop and then they never did because they didn't really have any intention of actually blocking her. Their intention was to get attention from her, you know, and that's yep. the difference. That's the difference. It's the, that's the entitlement. Yes. Uh, so it is really that like controlling option that like i'm going to do this and i also think that that comes in with not just blocking but like threatening behavior mm -hmm. i am going to do this if you do that like telling somebody your response to their behavior i think most times comes off very controlling because the purpose of you telling them is to get them to stop doing that behavior mm -hmm. um Instead and the reality is through it through it with them yeah can, there is an, and there is a difference between trying to get them to stop their behavior and communicating why that behavior bothers you. And mm -hmm. I think that that's where the line gets really blurry. Um, mm -hmm. If you're just sitting there and being like, I, if you continue to do this, I will do this. If you continue to punch me, I will kick you in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Versus, please stop punching me. It hurts. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I do not like it. Please stop. And if they don't stop, then you kick them in the balls. Like it is right. that there is that like lack of control. <laughs> sorry, I just I love my bed. Right. <laughs> hey, are you good, I'm Sasha? Sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm back. I just had to look. Oh boy, that it was is. fun. <laughs> you sound like you sound like you want to talk about it. Do you want to? We only have one more of these red flag behaviors. Did you want to? You do oh, not have to talk about the situation, by the way. No, no, yeah, no. I'll just I just want to briefly tell everybody kind of what's going on. Um, sorry for the. It's related, but not entirely related. So I'll tell you this. So there is a convicted uh, child abuser that is in the online roleplay community at large. And they were convicted of uh, harming a child back in 2009. So this is bad. I do not support child abuse. I believe there should be consequences for people that hurt children. I will say my focus is more on helping the children and helping people who have recovered from abuse. I am not a perpetrator focus um, justice person. So when I see that someone has been harmed, I don't look at that by being like, I want to kick the shit out of the person who did it. I think more of like, what can I do for the person who has been harmed? Like what support should be provided to them? That's kind of kind of my take on things. And if you fuck up and you've been punished for something, I don't believe in double jeopardy. Like I am not in the business of hunting down people for all time. I am in the business of if you continue to repeat something, for each new action, you should receive new consequences. Like, you punch someone once, you get kicked out once. You punch someone again, you get kicked out again. Repeated behavior, you get banned from coming to the concerts. But like, you punch some, you know, you do some, you do, even if you do something really terrible, like the entire point of like prison, for example, is like you murder somebody, you serve 20 years, you're supposed to have like, pay for your time, right? Like, and the justice system decides what that time is supposed to be as landon said like it's supposed to be like cold anyways so the thing is is that this dude has court documents online and every so often people will dig them up and like fucking freak out and i just and the last time it happened i was not as woke as i am now and i just kind of was like okay like bye van but it happened again, and now I'm, like, fucking mad. And I'm, like, actually, this is stupid. And I just got, like, a flood of people onto my site. Just an absolute flood of people calling me, like, a pedophile and a pedophile supporter because I just don't want to jump on this bandwagon. 
it's just it's insane and all like and i had to keep repeating myself where i was like i just don't believe in double jeopardy this person has already been punished do you have any proof that he's done anything wrong now like do you have this information like yada 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 and i just had all of these people yelling at me and it was just absurd i had to sit there and be like this just this isn't appropriate and they're like well why would you and this is kind of related but someone goes well why do you think he would listen to you and i'm just like because i treat people with respect and the thing is is if you are harassing and abusing people like you might bully them into doing things but you're never going to like get kind of the consensual mutual relationship that you want like it's never going to happen people aren't going to change people aren't going to be in love with you people aren't going to like you people aren't going to want to behave respectfully towards your community if you behave in this way but just it was just such a great example seeing kind of in real time like remember i said nobody deserves to be abused like this is the guy like people like a lot of times people are like anyone that's harmed children is the exception to my rule i will kick the shit out of that person i'm just like no no it's it still doesn't it still doesn't work like I'm sorry, but the child that was harmed in 2009 is not like receiving money in the mail for every angry message that you said. Like, you are not helping anybody. Like, every time you send an angry message on the internet, it doesn't donate money to like Guardian Ad Litem programs. It doesn't advocate for children's rights. It doesn't create paid childcare. Like, it does. It doesn't create like free therapy programs for people like children who are struggling with abuse. Like it doesn't do any of that. It does nothing except creates more harm. Like this person did something very harmful. I want to state that unequivocally. Harming a child is, is a really terrible thing. But these people are just adding more harm and like more harm doesn't cancel out more harm. So uh, that's kind of sorry for being quiet for a bit, guys. That's just no. I had to spend like 15 minutes like having like and I have to ban these random people and I'm just watching them sit online. Okay, they left. They like I like 27 anonymous users. And by, thank God, by the way, there was one person who was like, okay, Sasha, like I do have like some practical suggestions for how you run your site. Could you separate like not safe for work ads from safe for work ads? And I'm like, there we go like one sane person in this mob of 30 people it's saturday afternoon y'all it's a beautiful day why won't they go outside because <laughs> this why is way more fun, fun. <laughs> apparently well and that's and like that's the other thing too is that it's easy right uh restorative justice justice finding um places to volunteer to help victims finding um communities to support or outreaches to support people who have suffered at the hands of abuse and stuff like that all of that takes time and money and sitting on your computer being able to condemn something that you don't know anything about is a lot easier even though it is way less productive and it makes people feel more good because it is fast and easy and something that they feel like they can control and that's what's really up sad. because, because the reality is, is that it doesn't do anything. You're right, Sasha. That victim is still suffering. Still suffering. Oh. It doesn't matter how many times you dox somebody online. That person is still suffering. And that doxing doesn't actually probably help. Because most victims don't want to know. Like, don't want you to know that this thing happened to them. And it's, yeah. That's all also, anything. just like, if, if you want someone to stop committing harm, putting them into worse and worse emotionally stressful situations makes it more likely for them to do bad things. Like yeah. people, people feel like they're connected to a community, people who feel like they're treated with, you know, compassion and people who value the opinions of their community because they're like, okay, people think that I'm capable of good things. I want to prove them right. Like, those are the people who will be like, I don't want to commit harm because I want to continue to remain a member of my community. I'm, I'm balancing this assessment out. But, like, it, when you stress people the fuck out, it, you completely exile them and they have nobody, like, that cares about them. Like, why wouldn't you do terrible things at that point? Yeah, you have nothing. You have nothing to lose. So creating situations where you take everything away from somebody, you are creating situations where somebody has nothing left to lose. 
and I, you are like contrib you are probably creating more of the harm that you claim to be a guest. And I do want to and I do want to sit there and say um that yes, our justice system, especially here in the United States, is fucked up and it isn't based on justice. Like the the cold actual definition of justice our justice system doesn't possess because we are a justice of or like our justice system is based off of trial by jury um and plus all of the wonderful um the, the wonderful racism in our uh, in our jury or in our country as well uh please note that that was sarcastic as far as wonderful um <laughs> just didn't need that to be on my record anyway um i think that uh, but the reality is it is not our responsibility as citizens to uphold that justice um, because that is way against everything else. And therefore, it is not your job to uphold a certain amount of justice, but it is your job to like educate. It is your job to be educated. It is it is your job as a person to sit there and 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 call out abusive behaviors as you see them not punish someone for abusive behaviors that you yeah, think and just to be clear want. with this specific situation i mean if you run a role play server on discord you've probably seen this em going around and so you know exactly what we're talking about but in this specific situation there is no evidence that this person has done anything since 2009 y'all it's 2021 how long do we have to punish someone for some awful thing that they did it shouldn't yep. be this long. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, so some of the, uh, some of the comments that I have, they're just like, well, this person that was abused is going to feel crappy for their entire life. And I'm like, yes, so why don't you go do something about them? Like, the solution is to make the victim feel better and to advocate for more resources for victims. Like, the solution is not like, oh, well, this person who was victimized feels bad forever. So the solution is to make sure everybody feels bad forever. <laughs> like, no. The point is to make victims feel better for victims to recover. Like the solution is not to spread as much misery around as possible. And I think one thing that people underestimate is like when you commit harm, most of the time, like like the, one of the things that is talked about to bring it back around to our topic on in the abuse book, it talks about how abusers need to dehumanize their victims and emotionally distance themselves from them in order to keep themselves like psychically whole. Like in order for you to continue to believe that you are a good and okay person when you're harming somebody else, you have to kind of build these walls between yourself and other people. And that is a deeply lonely experience. I'm also listening to a podcast about OJ Simpson and after he kills uh, his ex-wife, Nicole, he talks about like how lonely he is. And it's like, I wonder, dude, I wonder if, beating your wife for 18 years and then killing her has contributed to the fact that you feel like you can't connect with anybody that you feel like nobody knows who you are like you don't feel any sense of human connection so just the thing is is that you know with all of these situations there's this desire to impose like violent retributive justice and make everybody feel shitty and it's like no i'm actually in the business of people being healed, either being healed from victimhood or being healed from their harmful behavior so that they stop committing harm. That's what I'm in the business of. Thank you for listening to my tangent, uh, listener. <laughs> it was a good <laughs> tangent because I, I mean, when we say like, nobody, you don't deserve to abuse anybody, like it includes, you know, people that you might think of as like scum of the earth, like somebody that hurt a child, you know, it well, includes yeah. everybody. Also, this is an online space. So how much of a, of each other do we actually know about? How yeah. much of like that's the other thing too is that that you're you're a hypocrite if you're willing to go after and it's again that like where does your where does your abuse line lay, right? Is that as soon as kids are involved, okay, abuse is fine. Um but like we don't know who people are until something is doxxed or released or or some invasion of privacy happens or someone says something um and that in itself is like okay you don't have the full story there like like there's also it's it's complicated and hard and just trying to like assume that you're better than somebody on the internet 
is stupid because this could happen to you no matter what your crime is. And you've committed a crime worthy of people to be angry at. And by the way, guys, because it's um it's two o'clock, I know I knew we were gonna run long and we definitely are because we've got like a whole other section of actual abusive <laughs> behaviors that we want to talk about. But because it's two o'clock and we've been going for two hours, I really have to pee. Y'all are welcome to continue oh to talk. Um I'll okay, still be able to I hear really you, but you won't be able to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we wanna right. just take do we wanna take a quick five minute break then? Yeah. I've okay. been chugging water to put my sushi in the fridge. I finished both and my coffees. Just... <laughs> Oh all right, God, we're all we're all gonna go pee. You guys like continue. I had a coffee. <laughs> okay, we're all gonna go pee. You guys continue to watch the pinatas. We'll be right back. <laughs> That's, yeah, my I, I I you know what I should have checked my heart rate when this started happening because I I guarantee you that it freaking spiked. And uh, I I just another perspective, <laughs> just real quick for you listener. I do not relish these conversations. <laughs> like when people are upset about a, a past harm that's been committed, it's often because they have experienced a similar harm or they empathically identify with the harm that's being committed. And a lot of times if you haven't gotten any kind of justice in your own life, it can be very painful to hear about situations where other people have been harmed the way you feel like, you know, you're just you know, the per your perpetrator didn't suffer, and so here's a perpetrator that you can make suffer. Hello! And I Sorry. <laughs> and, I, and I don't enjoy having to confront people who are clearly in a lot of pain, or people who probably genuinely believe they're doing the right thing, and I, I do not relish having to essentially, like, throw down tire spikes and be like, actually, you're the bad guy, because just imagine how painful that is. You're already in pain, um, remembering or thinking about something really painful that happened to you. You're in pain because of the injustice of the world. And you're, you have something that's kind of making you feel better. And then someone comes in and is like, actually, you are the bad guy. Not only is, are you, do you feel bad because of the bad thing that happened to you, but you should feel bad because you're the bad guy here. Like, that is crappy. That's so crappy and i i'm very frustrated with these people who just like 30 of them i don't like i usually don't get more than three people online in this chat box three to four people on average in a day so i'm dealing with i'm dealing with like 10 times the amount of spectators and i don't relish having to like talk down people who are in a lot of pain and this is difficult for me, and I just don't think people understand that they're causing harm not only to the person that they're pursuing, but you are causing collateral damage to every single person that has to witness what you're doing and, like, engage in it either by directly trying to slow you down or by just being a social commentator. Like, that is very bad. <laughs> It is terrible. I feel terrible right now. I feel anxious and stressed. And I'm just like, and I don't know, kind of, I've experienced an abusive dynamic. We're going to get to, uh, like, actual behaviors, but one of them is uh, witch hunting and reversing accusations, like, and name calling. So I've experienced, like, all of these things. I've been called a pedophile or a pedophile supporter. I have, um, by saying, like, oh, I just don't think that you should double jeopardy people kind of the same thing well actually you are you are the abusive one for stating that this behavior is abusive and then witch hunting like gathering up this behavior and like circulating it around like all of, and when you are abused like you just feel super bad i feel tired i feel stressed I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I should continue to monitor this situation. I don't know if I should delete all of these messages. And that's like some serious psychic harm that these people cause me in like 15 minutes. What the hell? So, Sasha, I'm going to need you to do two things. One, take a deep breath. And two, go pee. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so before we get to the actual um, behaviors, there was one other red flag behavior that we wanted to touch on, and that was um, acting differently in private versus public. 
Um, so I'm, I'm so, sorry, we're going to kind of backtrack for a second and then we're going to go to the actual um, specific behaviors that we, that we do consider abusive. This is another red flag behavior, so it may or may not be abusive. It kind of depends, just like on some of the other red flag behaviors that we've seen. But if you have somebody that's like super friendly to you in private and then it kind of like rude or negs you in public or vice versa, um, that could potentially be a red flag. It, it all goes back to like why they're doing it. But sometimes this is a way to kind of exert their control over you by being unpredictable, by making you question if you're really friends with them or not, if you're really, if they really like you as a role play partner or not, things of that nature. So if you have somebody that like all of a sudden when you get into DMs with them, they're like super, super nice. But in public, they kind of should talk to you a little bit like that should be a little bit of a red flag where you're like, hmm, why are they doing this? This is very strange. Why do they suddenly feel differently about me when we're in private? Yeah, um, I uh, yeah, I think that the the opposite is also very alarming. Um, and in my in my eyes, like even more like confusing because <laughs> like you're so nice to me when other people are around. Why are you being cold and distant? And I'm very confused, especially because if it's an online forum, sort of sort of space um where everything is through uh messaging so you can't read tone um so that that coldness and meanness is something that we often can gaslight light ourselves into thinking that doesn't exist and so we'll continue to let the behavior grow without even considering it a problematic behavior mm -hmm. or a red flag behavior because mm -hmm. you can't so tell a lot of that, times you can't tell no. but if someone's different in different spaces then okay they know how to be nice and they're choosing not to in this one specific instance. Yeah. So it's alarming and confusing and sometimes a little like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? Yep. <laughs> no worries, Bree. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, I knew we were going to go over today, but we're about to get to the juicy part. So if anybody still is able to uh, to hang on there, yeah, here we comes still the page and a half guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay actual abusive behaviors sasha are, are you back are you good I think she's back nope i lied she's not back yet or she hates us i don't know probably both <laughs> <laughs> it's fine i'm the problem child we're unused to it at this point <laughs> that's okay we can we can go ahead into some of the behaviors okay um so, so the first one that we have is name calling. So one little caveat that I want to make to this before we get into the actual behavior is this does not include criticism. So what I mean by that is if you did something and someone's like, hey, that was kind of racist to say that, that's not name calling. Okay, that's <laughs> not name calling. To tell you that this behavior that you're doing or this action that you're doing is um is racist or homophobic or transphobic or whatever like that is not necessarily name calling um because those aren't those aren't like bad names to call people right those are descriptors of behaviors um we can debate over whether when someone says that if if their opinion on what is racist homophobic whatever is correct or not but just to be clear like that's not what i mean when i'm saying name calling yeah it's um Right, I'm back. Hello. Hey, you're just in time. We just started abusive behaviors. Yeah, because a lot of okay. those, a lot of those ist behaviors, um, is feedback, and um, especially if it's coming from the the minority group, like someone who is a part of the minority group that they are like referring to you as. So if a person of color says, "Hey, that's a bit racist," they're not name calling. <laughs> Um, they're, they're just expressing their opinion on how they feel about that behavior, right? That's what they're uh, doing. And you should especially listen to that. Um, you should listen to that even if they're not a person in that um, group, but uh, should certainly listen to it if they are a person in that group. Yep. Um, There's a reason that yeah. they're saying that and their reason might be valid. And I'm sure that none of us want to be racist and so, or, or homophobic or whatever. So, you know, we should think about like, well, why are they saying that? Is there something that I should be changing? You know, that's not the same thing. Exactly. Um, but name calling, do we want to give some, like, do we want to give actual example? Yeah, yeah. Do we have a, do we have a good example of name calling? Um, Landon or, or Sasha, if y'all have an example, I would love to hear it. Well, 
why I have the easiest one. I have the pedophile call out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, calling with someone like calling by like the pedophile. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Just <laughs> oh, it's terrible. But that's they're like they probably is also like you're so stupid. Yeah. You know, you're just an idiot. What a moron. Someone calls you like a, like autistic or the the R slur. Like these like those are like nasty things. You know, derogatory. Like the point of the point of the name is just to to put you down, to make you feel lesser. Or to in this case like <laughs> terminate a disagreement like you're just saying that because you know you're just a really sensitive person like you know not necessarily name calling but just kind of that kind of cutting that kind of cutting thing like their their only goal in this situation of what we're talking about is to make you feel bad they're not giving you a piece of feedback they're not you know they're not like uh joking around with you they're just saying something to make you hurt and there's no other reason for them to say it yeah, I also think that this applies to um, if you have expressed the fact that you don't like to be called something. And uh, like, so some pe- t- sometimes I will affectionately, I am so sorry, my... <laughs> <Do-do-do>. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are past two o'clock, so all of my mute has gone off. Um, <laughs> no, so um, affectionately referred to as like bitch. Sometimes I refer to my friends as bitch just because that's the kind of person I am but it's very funny (laughs) but if somebody doesn't appreciate that and I continue to do that that is a form of name calling uh it's also a form of like breaking boundaries but in that term too like if you've expressed that you don't particularly like to be called I don't know if there's a Caitlin who doesn't like to be called Katie um that like sort of ignorance of ignoring that boundary and calling you by a different name anyway is is name calling the, um, and I know that that calling... also falls under uh, not respecting your boundaries, but I do want to like sit there and say that that is part of it. Yeah, because it's it's because when it comes to name calling, the only purpose is to make you hurt. Like that's at the root of it, and that's why it's an abusive behavior. Because remember, the recipe is um, is that entitlement plus control. So yep. they have some kind of entitlement, something that that probably they're hurting over, and instead of talking to you about that, they're exerting control by saying, well, you made me feel bad. I'm going to make you feel bad too. Yes. And all of that, like, I mean, and it's, that is a way of, of exerting power too, is sitting there and being like, I know you don't like this thing, so I'm going to do it anyway. Yep. Um, so next stalking. It's all about the control. Yep. 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 Stalking, following one someone from place to place after they've shown disinterest or stopped talking to you collecting personal details and threatening to reveal them to other people um obviously there is a certain there are levels here i think with this one um but if you if someone is following you from server to server or role play to role play when you have also engaged that you do not are you're not interested or it has been gathering information on you that you're not comfortable that they have um they are stalking you that is a form of stalking it's harder to prove when it's online, but it is still stalking, and that is an abusive behavior. Yep. So once someone has blocked you, it is not okay to go make a second account that's not blocked yet, so that you can message them again. Don't that do is, that. That is, that is stalking. Is, that is stalking. Don't and do it. I, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't Um, matter if you're justified, if you feel like they shouldn't have blocked you. And and maybe you're right. Maybe they shouldn't have blocked you. It doesn't matter. They exerted their boundary and you should just respect that regardless of other circumstances. Yep. And um, like I said, that this is this is on a multiple level. So I will call out low level stalking here. Um, You if you uh, have broken up with a significant other online, or in general and have unfollowed them on all social media or they've blocked your social media and you have like a secondary social media account following that person on that secondary social media account is still stalking um this there is multiple levels here and that is still abusive behavior um obviously gathering personal details and showing up at like someone's house way worse than necessarily you know following someone on instagram from a secondary account 
but uh, they are, you know, along the same vein. <laughs> um, just the the pull of what is okay and what isn't is farther and farther away. I think um, a really extreme a really extreme example of this stalking is like straight up doxing. Is saying, you know, oh, yeah. I know what your real legal name is. I know um, your address, and I'm going to reveal it to people um you know I, i'm i'm privy to this private information and i'm gonna tell the world about it even though you shared it with me in confidence like that that's not okay you know calling people's work just because they did something shitty online not okay like yeah don't do that <laughs> no. don't do that and again i don't care how bad the crime that someone did is they don't deserve to lose their job because nope. they need that to get money to eat food to survive. <laughs> and I, I think people, I think people don't it realize like the therapy. You ding dong guys <laughs> to change if they don't have money to pay for therapy. Bingo. What are you doing? Bingo. Like I think it's yep. so crazy. I think it's so crazy that people feel like oh they deserve to lose their job. If what they did is not related to their workplace, then no, they didn't actually. You know, do I think that sometimes there's situations where maybe like celebrities deserve to not get contracts because of something awful they did? I mean, maybe, but that's partly because their job is to be a public figure and to have certain elements of, you know, their life known. Like that's part of the, the gig there, of being there's an entertainer. A there's a consent there that when yes. someone becomes there's a and also like this is this is another it can be a whole other topic on its own. There's a difference between famous and celebrity, and there is a cons, in like there is a there is a line of consent there. If you are a celebrity, you are consenting for your right for privacy to be to be taken away if you become a public figure. So, somewhat, uh, somewhat. Like there's famous. a line there. There's a line there, but somewhat, right? So uh, yes, but, like obviously it is it is less it is becoming less and less specific, and there is a line, but. I mean, if we look at our justice system, that is what has been agreed on. There's a reason why people like paparazzi can take photos of public figures. It's because mm -hmm. they are a public figure, mm -hmm. uh, even if they're in their own homes, which is creepy as fuck. But um, yeah, you you have that consent. Um, yeah, but but somebody that's like somebody that's like um, like I don't know, like a, a a call center employee, right? And they post something online that. Um, that's like, you know, not, that's not cool or problematic or whatever. They don't necessarily deserve to not be a call center employee anymore. Like that, that should not be yeah. a thing. Um, or like somebody who's become a meme, if they just posted a fun TikTok, uh, and, and have become a meme and you didn't like their TikTok or whatever, um, or you didn't like that they were, they got as famous as they did. It doesn't deserve punishment or backlash. Mm -hmm. Um, and also doesn't deserve at that level stalking too, like like doxing their information, but also like you following them in weird ways. <laughs> exactly, um, exactly. all right, water torturing. When you can, and what's what's that one? Because this was actually a new term for me. Um, I had yeah, to hear this before. Either. Do you want to explain this, from, Yeah, I stole this from Lundy Band Prop because it was it was in the book but basically like water torturing so i said when you consistently undercut someone with sarcasm and cruel remarks a well, meanness that is supposedly quote light-hearted but cuts into a person's self-esteem and then insisting someone is crazy when they have an emotional reaction to your remarks so this <laughs> is about like the death by a thousand cuts tactic like you have somebody that doesn't isn't escalating into like super aggressive name calling they're not stalking you, like, they're not screaming in public. Their harassment is, like, it's not, like, very bombastic. But this is just the first, like, you're just cutting into somebody over and over and over again. People that make, like, shady jokes about you in public all of the time and kind of laugh it off. People who, like, tell, like, really mean jokes at your expense, like, in your DMs all the time where you just kind of feel like persistently low-grade bad, and it gets to you over time. It's the water torturing, the drop of water on you over and over and over and over. And then finally, when all of this stuff builds up, and you react to kind of the cumulative abuse that has happened to you, they're like, 
oh my god i just told i just was telling a joke like why are you overreacting but you are reacting to like all of the, the mean jokes and the mean comments that have been told before this so the thing is is like this person knows that they're getting to you like or when you do this to somebody like don't think <laughs> like be honest with yourself you're like oh i just have a dark or critical sense of humor it's like no you're targeting somebody and you are trying to wear them down to kind of mm-hmm. put them in their place to maintain control over them so I, I wanted to put this one in here because i think a lot of times you know like we named two big ones name calling and stalking but like what about like these the, the subtle persistent kind of abuse which is still abuse Yep, because it's like, and and it's it's like the it's like the guy that's like, oh, I was just joking. Don't take it so hard. And it's like, but I wasn't talking about that one joke. I was talking about the fact that you tell this joke every single freaking time we go out, and I'm tired of it, right? Like that's that is definitely a situation that um that I've I have seen that I've experienced. It's very frustrating because then the the other person can very easily pretend like they didn't know what they were doing. But in my experience, they always know. They know what they were doing. They, and they were doing it on purpose. And um, they just knew they could get away with it. This is the moment that I take a shot. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, just in general. Like, I'm. we're going to own up to it, right? But I, I have a... I have in the past had a tendency to do this. I didn't even know that there was a name for it until I read this. Um, yeah, that, I didn't know it was called something either, but I know like, exactly like, what it oh, is. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And um, like, I, I have I have all the reasoning in the world for it, but it's like, oh no, I've done that. I can consistently say that I have. And so like part of doing this and having this conversation is owning the things that we've done before. And so I am taking that step for the rest of you all to listen. But yeah, no, I've I have been guilty of that. Absolutely. It's so. very easy to do. It's very easy to do yeah. because at least um at least in my experience, a lot of times the people around the person doing the water torture will support it. They'll be like, Yeah, they were just joking. Why are you taking it so hard? Like you can't take a joke, or like you're you're like looking into this more than what it is, or da 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 da. Like it's a very it's a very easy type of abuse to perpetuate. Other people will typically support the abuser, at least in my experience. I also think that a lot of these abuses, um, especially with one like water torturing, uh, is something you don't necessarily learn on your own. It's it's not only do you have a community backing you for it, but you probably it's learned behavior. Most of these are learned behavior. Um, and someone did it to you, or you witnessed them do it, and it worked, or absolutely. whatever. So recognizing that that's part of it is that you learned this behavior and then perp- and then continued it on, um, and that that's part of why it's an abuse cycle and that you need to recognize those things within yourself and sit there and go oh okay that's not healthy that needs to stop yep for sure but wanted to just call attention to that because like i said from the very beginning that we are not here to sit here and be like oh we're perfect and have never done these behaviors Mm -hmm. so um shall we go next Sure, Hello. yeah. Did you have more to say on water torturing, Sasha? Nope, that was everything. Cool. Yep. Drill surgeoning, which is insisting your partner has to do everything exactly your way because their way is stupid, boring, or incorrect. Oh. Um, I think personally, at least in my experience, everyone has been a drill sergeant at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially online. Because I think that this is one of those things that don't realize that it's uh, it's an abuse thing, right? Um, or, or it has a tendency to be that abusive sort of behavior because you just want what you want, right? And you're just searching for that. So that's not abusive in any form. But it is. But it is whenever it is, yeah. you... It is whenever, like, okay, so I'll, I'll use a, a personal example Um, When I was doing a lot of indie roleplay on Tumblr, it was very hard to find partners to do certain things, right? So um, I ended up getting very specific in a lot of what I was looking for. And um, and this is where I kind of learned how to write ads that actually work. (laughs) Because what I was doing before that is writing ads that would get a lot of DMs. And then what I would do is try to convince the person in my DMs to do exactly what we wanted instead of um instead of like it being a compromise and a conversation right i'm gonna tell you how much that didn't work it absolutely didn't work you know (laughs) 
Um, and I and I do think, and when I when I read this here, like that's the type of thing that I think of. I think of those situations where, you know, either the person's done this to me or I've done this to the other person, where I'm not interested in actual collaboration. I'm just interested in like this specific need that I'm looking for and I'm I'm hunting for this like you know unicorn that's gonna be exactly what I want. Right? It's, spoilers, this unicorn doesn't exist and it doesn't work. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. So when I when I when I hear when I hear drill sergeanting and I and I look at this, that's the kind of thing that I that I think of, you know, and, and it it fits the the abuse formula, right? Entitlement to get exactly what I want plot wise with no compromise, right? Plus the behavior to enact that or try to enact it in reality. Yes. Sorry, I yeah. was I was giving references in the chat. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, no, I think that um Yeah. Accepting that it's not gonna happen, accepting compromise is the way to go. And um recognizing that the people you are writing with are not stupid and boring. Mm -mm. They're human beings. Mm -hmm. um, is how you solve that problem. Or mm -hmm. at least how you try to change that behavior. Because they're not um, really. They're, they're just doing yeah. the same thing that you're doing and trying to express what, what they want out of the roleplay situation. And I definitely think that this is one of those um, abusive behaviors that is a lot harder for you to see introspectively. Because you might not think anything you're doing is wrong. You're literally, there's a goal that you have in mind and you're trying to do, and you're trying to complete that goal. And it, mm -hmm. this might be one of those behaviors that you either encounter people who do this that take a that take a couple of times and that go through a couple of partners of people pointing out how their behavior can be abusive mm -hmm. um, and is abusive. And I think that that's something that like is very unique from one that we haven't necessarily had on the list yet. Um, most people know that like name calling is not okay most people know that stopping <laughs> is not okay most people know yeah. that waterboard boarding torturing is uh purposeful so drill sergeanting is like oh no you're just it's a different kind of tool or a different kind I, of mom this one to me it's very easy to convince yourself that all you're doing is asserting your own boundaries Absolutely. but then when you yeah. look at it like that's not true because having exactly what you want in the role play is actually it's like everything can't be your deal breaker, right? Like every single little detail can't be your deal breaker to not do the role play, right? So I think that's where it comes in is when you, is the entitlement there is the is the getting the exact specific role play that you want. Um, and I know what I, yeah. what I had to learn uh, that kind of changed my mind on this was that if I allowed the collaboration to happen, my idea was actually not the best idea. <laughs> And the, I mean, the that's, collective that's the wonderful thing about RP, right? Right. <laughs> like, and, and, the, and the collective combination of both of our ideas was actually what the best idea was in most situations, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that like but like it's really hard too to be on the receiving end of this sort of abuse because when it so there are either are two options that I see. One is the like right off the bat drill sergeant that is on a mission and will bulldoze you and won't do anything else. And that's really isolating, right? That abusive behavior, it doesn't feel good, but it's isolating because you learn very quickly if you have no emotional connection with someone that you're just like, okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, and then you get weird. ghosted all the time. <laughs> and then there's the covert kind. And the covert kind, I think, is a little bit more um, hard to deal with because uh, it's like you have a plan and then um, if you don't realize that your partner, who is the drill sergeant, has a plan of their own that they're not communicating or expectations that they're not communicating. And then every single time you hit up against and go different direction than those expectations, that's when the behaviors that typically are other abuse behaviors start happening as well. Um, where it's like, oh, the gaslighting, the um, controlling, the threatening to quit, all of those kinds of things start happening as a result of that. So it's really hard to see big picture with that covert, covert drill sergeant, mm -hmm. um, which I also think is like something that is really tough. And then you feel crazy because they also 
ha assuming all of this is happening in the DMs, might also treat you differently in the chat than they do in the DMs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're just like, what is going on? Yep. So. Yep. Uh, we've definitely seen that situation before. Oh yeah. <laughs> by the no, way, and... by the way, if you're in our role plays and you're um, and you're experiencing things like that and you need help dealing with the situation, uh, we're happy to help. Let us know. That's, um, yeah, that's we've why seen the mod team is here. Yep, we've seen it for um, sure, and uh, and we can help you work through it if you if you cannot do that on your own. Of course, if you can do it on your own, more power to you. But you don't have to feel you don't have to feel isolated. And if you, you are help. doing it on your own, please still let the mod teams know so that when it when and if it blows up, they don't just get all the information from both sides at the same time. Um, <laughs> it can be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. If we see the in the explosion coming, it helps a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just saying but yeah. um i think that having that um yeah having a good mod team to support that and as a mod team i also think that it's important for us to say that we also support um you solving your problems for yourself we will be there to help you but we will never be unless we're really needed and the and the situation is really necessary we won't step in between we will simply like mitigate yeah. Or mediate a, a a situation. We won't necessarily yeah. sit there and be like, we're gonna white knight this for you. Um, <laughs> that's not our job. Well, because that doesn't work either. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Especially <laughs> because if we only have one side of the story, we don't actually know the full story. And then if you remember what Sasha said at the beginning, a lot of times, like, you know, the wife beater says, well, I'm I'm not abusive because my I use an open hand instead of a closed hand. You know, so a lot of times the abuser doesn't even realize what they're doing. Yeah, and then also, like, a lot of the times, too, um, we have had people who are the abusers themselves come to us as the victims. Yeah, um, oh my god, that's so awkward. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> well, uh, yeah. thanks for telling us the full story. Yes, why, that is something that why they, did... they talk about in the book, too. They're like, abusers will often be like, accuse the other person yeah. of abuse. It's very, that is a very common thing. Ha another one that just happened to me, we'll get to that one, but that's, that's reversing the accusation. When you call someone's oh. behavior out, and they're like, well, actually, it's you. We can well, do that one next. She... We can skip down to that one. Let's talk about it, because okay. I think it is kind of related oh. to the drill sergeanting. Hold on, I have a point. Um, okay. Go, go, go. Why did she shoot you? Oh, because you were hitting her? Oh, uh, I mean, reactionary. It, it uh, upped it, but like that's not telling us the full story. Uh, if they're like, my wife shot me, it's like, okay, well, so why did she shoot you? <laughs> oh, you were hitting her? Okay, good to know. Thank you for okay. telling me. And, and, and this was not the first time you beat her. It was many successive yeah. beatings, and, she, and you were screaming as you hit her that you were going to kill her. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. you've been abusing her for 24 years? Okay, good to, good, good to know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe no. that's problematic. But uh, but yeah. okay. Do you have anything else on this? No, that was I just had that bit. It that yeah. <laughs> anyway, go. <laughs> but yeah, reversing accusations. When your partner complains about how you're treating them poorly, you accuse the other person of being the abusive one, or claiming the accusation itself is abusive. This is legendary. Like, by God, I have seen this. I I I've experienced so many of these things. Yeah, it's, I like I'm a person that generally doesn't think of myself as a victim, which is funny if you know anything about my life story. Just <laughs> rife with all sorts of abuse, to be totally honest. Uh, but I just I don't think of myself very much as a victim until something new tends to happen and then reminds me. I'm like, oh yeah, this is my life. But yeah, this is a common one. I've seen this. I've seen this offline with like my dad. This is a great one. Like if I crit I, I can say if I criticize my dad about anything he's done in the past, he'll be like, "Actually, you are the abusive one for bringing this up. Why do you keep living in the past?" Like any form of accountability for that man just freaks out. I've seen it when I've confronted people online. I'm like, "Why did you do this terrible thing?" And they're like, or like when I'm just like, "Why are you doing this terrible thing in the moment?" As you can see, when I'm online in my chat box, being like, "What are you doing? And why are you doing it?" And people are like. You are the child molester for for asking us questions about what we're doing. You are the abusive person for for saying this. But when you're in like an interpersonal like role play relationship, 
you know, you'll be like, you know, you're you're treating me very badly. They're like, well, you're the one who's really treating me badly. You never reply. You don't care about me, blah, blah, blah. Or like, you know, you're the abusive one. And if you are like a good, like if you generally try to hold yourself to a standard of being a good person, this can be so dangerous because it takes you off of the offensive and puts you on the defensive. Instead of focusing on like, here is what this person has done to harm me. Here is their pattern of behavior. Here are my boundaries. Here is what I want to say. You get this, and suddenly you're like, well, I'm not a perfect person. Maybe there is something I have done wrong. And suddenly all your attention is diverted from like addressing the situation at hand to, de to defending yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, and, it, and, and I think this one is very natural for, pe for people when they're accused of something to explain why they did the shitty thing that they did, right? So I think at, at the core, this is, this is like the kind of surface level thought of where the reversing accusation comes from. And so you hear like, hey, you've done this thing that really hurt me. And your instinct is to explain why you did the shitty thing yeah. that hurt them right? And it can easily turn into like not addressing the original thing that the person came to you with. So yeah. I would think that when it comes to these reverse accusations, the best thing that you can do is say like, I, you know, I understand why you feel that way. Let's talk about that. You know, since we're opening up the floor, I have some things too that I'd like to address after we talk about this specific situation, you know, cause I don't, I don't think it's, it's right for everything to not get addressed but at the same time like if what you're doing is making sure that the other person cannot address their grievances like that's still a problem yeah it's no one is a 1960s villain right or a cartoon villain mm -hmm. everyone has reasons why they do shitty things mm -hmm. um like no one sits there and goes i, I woke up this morning and i just want to do terrible human things um, I woke up and chose violence. It's a joke. It's not real. People don't actually. It's do not that. real. Like, well, I mean, there's times where you wake up and you're like, I choose violence, but that violence is usually that sentence is usually said because something pissed you off, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that then your violence is is an okay reaction. What I'm saying is that is that people people react. People don't just act, especially when it comes to terrible, shitty things. Mm -hmm. Um, which means that everyone has something for why they did something. Mm -hmm. No one just sits there and goes, unless you're like six, no one just sits there and goes, I don't know why I did it. I just did it. Like people, people know. <laughs> um, and they usually want so, to share their story too of why they did it. Absolutely. Because no one also wants to be accused of anything. No one wants to, no one wants to feel like they're just doing shitty things for shitty things. They have their reasons and want to explain that. But it's learning how and when to explain that. That is the important part. And if you are someone who is going to um prioritize your emotional and moral like clearing of your moral plate before your partners especially if they bring uh if they bring a problem up to you then that is an abusive like behavior it's that kind of behavior of well i did this thing because you did this thing mm -hmm. i hit you because you didn't make dinner right mm -hmm. like that's that's the same behavior um so really sitting there and listening to Okay, I hear you. I have some concerns as well, but let's talk about this first. Um, is the only way to deal with confrontation in that way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got on that one. Yep. Manipulative sensitivity. All right. <clears throat> um, yeah. This one, I think a great we see. One for... Oh, go ahead, Sasha. Yeah, I just. Okay, okay, I think we're about to say the same thing. This one, we see a lot. Oh my oh god. This is rampant in roleplay communities in particular. And um, this is basically what it is. It's when you feel, when you find a way to be upset with many, many things, and then you insist your partner comfort or console you, often because they're the supposedly the ones causing you to be upset. Um, so basically, a thing happens, uh, you get upset, maybe your upset is justified, maybe it's, it's not, and um, you go to this person that supposedly caused the upset, sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't, right, and they're expected to 
console you and make you feel better. So the focus here is on those feelings as opposed to actually solving the problem or, or anything of that nature. And I feel like this happens in roleplay all the time because we in roleplay, this hobby is very intimate, right? So you'll go to your roleplay partner and expect them to just like constantly comfort you about whatever it is that's hurting. Um, and you never get, they never get a chance to prioritize anything that, that they're feeling. Yeah. This is such a hard, uh, <laughs> it's such an easy behavior to fall into, yeah. especially if you, I find that there are certain abusive behaviors that are very, that are very easy to uh, fall into if you are a victim of abuse and manipulative sensitivity is one of those. Um, where it's like, especially online, where you don't have to necessarily care about the human on the other side of that screen, um, but someone or find, but finding someone who's willing to give you emotional validation, emotional support, uh, and then you not having to return that is really like not great, <laughs> especially if you're using it for attention. Um, but very common because of the need that it fills in a, people who have been abused in the past. Um, obviously that's not the only reason it's, it's being done, but that is a huge reason as to why I, I personally think it's so popular amongst the RP world. Um, because it is that like, Oh, we, uh, you know, we attract abusers, but we also attract victims. Um, and that is it's a thin line and also like trying to find emotional sta st stability is hard <laughs> and finding a community who's willing to help out with that is something that can be totally abused so all right go for it sasha i cut you off um whatever else you oh, wanted to add to that i'm gonna just this is one where like there are some, you know, like there are people out there who are really going through it. Like people who are just have really crappy lives offline or online who have been through a lot and they are just really sensitive. They're just easily triggered by like uncomfortable confrontational things. They're easily upset by not getting their way. They, they're really hopeful for role play to do a lot of like emotional processing for them or for the roleplay community to be like a place of friendship that maybe they don't have offline. And they want to get their emotional needs met and they will be manipulative to the point of trying to coerce everyone around them into like catering to them. Yep, and they're not even realizing they, they're doing <laughs> Yeah, or they, again, once again, they believe they're entitled to do that. They're like, I've been through so much shit and I'm, all I'm asking is for people to be nice to me. So why can't I make people be nice to me? that's not bad but again it's like this centering of yourself like my needs are more important than everybody else's needs it doesn't matter how much work or time this takes it doesn't matter if it's disrupting a single person's life it doesn't matter if it's disrupting an entire group and you'll see this where people will take like kind of legitimate grievances or maybe legitimate problems that they have and they will escalate them to the point of like really trying to silence this one i don't i really like I, I believe that there are some things that are like truly harmful to say to other people that they shouldn't be said. But like, I think most people are doing their best. And when you correct them, they will usually like take it down a notch or stop. And there can be a point where someone will take something like further and further because they want to kind of make an example of somebody and make sure that everybody knows that, oh, like, if you say something racist, I will make your life like a continuous permanent nightmare. And it's like, no, no, like, yes, there should be consequences for people saying racist things, but then like the point of correcting people is to give them a chance to do it better and being like, well, I just, you know, I just feel unsafe. I just, you know, whenever this person says something that makes me uncomfortable, I'm just reminded that they're racist behavior and it makes me feel unsafe. And it's like, okay, like this is more about you maintaining control over a situation. And that could be with not just racism, but any kind of other, like otherwise acceptable trigger. And people will just escalate, escalate, escalate. Yep. And the, the result of this, a lot of times when it comes to like running a server will be like getting a DM 
warning you about somebody's poor behavior in the past. <laughs> it's like, I, that sucks. That sucks. Please block them then so that you don't see their messages. Um, you know, I, I'm not, it, it, it's not the server owner's job to kick them out for something that they didn't do in their server, that they did it in some other space, right? And, um, and I can understand why a victim in like that type of example would not want to be in a space with the person that hurt them. But that doesn't mean that that person that hurt them is not allowed in any spaces, period. Um, and I think that that's where it becomes like the manipulative sensitivity. It's where when you make it your goal, you, you know, excommunicate that person from every possible space you may enter. Like, that's not right. They still okay. deserve to exist. Is it, but it's also like taking something from your partners too, right? Like that's how I have interpreted the manipulative sensitivity of being like, you constantly want your partner to console you and your emotions as far as mm -hmm. like your situations too. Sorry, I just yeah. want to make sure that I have the right idea. Okay. No, I, think that that's, I think that that's right too. Um, and we've definitely, we've definitely seen that. I think everybody's probably seen oh, yeah. that that's had the role play partner where you start to feel like, am I your role play partner or am I your therapist? <laughs> the the constant uh the constant question of my youth <laughs> <laughs> because like that's the other thing too is that while there are archetypes of uh, like and i guess i should have talked about this earlier but um you know abuse survivors will oftentimes become abusers especially if they don't get help um and uh, there are certain archetypes that you fall into. So like some abuse survivors will fall into this manipulative sensitivity abuser, um, while some of them will also sit there and be the person who's uh, cycled of abuse of a, as an abuser or as an abuse or as a victim. Um, and so like, it's like this really nasty cycle, which is why abuse is really complicated and why it's an already three hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just, if this, I'm trying to like feel, trying to figure out like what advice I can give to people that are in this situation. Um, and I'm reminded of this Twitter thread that I hate. <laughs> Where this uh, person puts out a template for how to ask for help from your friends online. And I'm going to misquote it because I can't remember it very well. But uh, it's something like, you know, do you have the emotional capacity to hear something that may harm you? Go ahead, Sasha, because I know you know what thread I'm talking about. No, I know. This is funny because my friends now use this as a joke. I got like a DM from one of my friends the other day that's like, Sasha, are you ready to receive information that may harm you? And then immediately follows it up with like an anime Twitter thread. And I'm just like, yeah. But that's Actually, really like, are you in a space to receive information that may harm you? And we, we hate it. Um, I want to say, um, did someone answer how would you mitigate the type of reverse accusations? Did they say that? I, oh no, I was, we were going to go through this when um, I, because I want to finish this before we ref go back to that. Okay. Um, okay. I actually want to yeah. say, I, I actually agree with, I haven't seen the whole full Twitter thread, but asking permission to talk to someone if they're in a space to hear and help and, and receive feedback is actually, I find very oh, helpful for in my sure. relationship. For sure. Um, but this is the thing that the Twitter thread is talking about. Yeah. Be specific, like, hey, do you have a minute? I want to discuss some, like, weight-related concerns. Or, hey, do you have a minute? Like, something like this happened to me today. Or, like, I want to talk about, like, you know, I'm, I think thinking about my past childhood trauma. Like, don't just, like, never do the general thing of can we talk. It's terrible. Yes. Oh, like, yeah. Be specific. Yeah, this was like that. This was like the, the like, way too online SJW way of saying, hey, can we talk? Like, and the reason why the thread is so funny is because basically what ha what has happened to this person is they have become all of their online friends therapists. And it seemed to me, and I don't know, I'm like probably reading a little bit too much into this person's life, but it seemed to me that instead of having friends online, they had a bunch of people that came to them with their problems all the time and it was overwhelming them, right? And so they were trying to help people in the same situation. And I just think like when I hear that, I'm, my, my thought goes to, why are all of your relationships like this? Um, why is everyone that you're friends with online 
constantly just coming to you for therapy instead of like having like activities you do together or you know fun memes or or things like that and so i just think like that's that's like this whole thing right so if if this manipulative sensitivity kind of speaks to you i think it it also you should also look at like in general what are your friendships online like yeah. are you all just constantly giving each other therapy is that something that you really have the capacity to to be doing you know um maybe the answer is make better friends yeah or, or set boundaries and i think like as someone who came from that world who i am still the therapist in several of my friends um especially the ones from my childhood um I, I that's where i came from so i understand that like trap to fall into mm -hmm. um where you look around and you go oh am i your friend or am i just the cheaper version of a therapist um yes. so i think that uh yeah definitely examining that definitely uh reviewing your boundaries um and part of that boundary could be asking for having them ask for permission to hold space to sit there and be like oh yeah can you talk about this thing that happened to me and it'd be like no <laughs> and being and having the word no be okay mm -hmm. that's the biggest mm -hmm. one but that's my i mean that's again my own personal experience with the whole thing so yeah um no i mean i think the question's, I the question's the question's fine thing. like the question's fine i just think it needs i think it needs to be specific like hey yeah, i want so to talk about to... yeah yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it doesn't do anyone any good with anxiety of, hey, can you talk? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because you're like, oh boy. Like, hey, I'm really upset about my mom. Can I talk, can I vent to you for a second? I mean, isn't a bad thing. No, that's fine. Because there have been many a times where I received a DM that I was not prepared for while in the middle of work and being like, uh, my friend is having a crisis and now I feel obligated to help, but I also can't help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that sucks um, too. But that's, again, my own personal experience with that. So people might have very different uh, point of view. I want to reach, I want to go to um, Soggy Lemon's question as far as how do you mitigate uh, these types of reverse accusations as the person who is the, the victim, quote unquote. So you have brought up an issue to your role play partner. Your role play partner has then reversed accused you how do you how do you navigate that okay so two um, things at first as as the victim you just want to stay focused like here's the thing we're all imperfect and maybe there is shit that you have done wrong but you have to be like be that as it may i want to address your behavior first like i want to address these things these are the things i want to talk about i want this pattern to be addressed like you just kind of got to stay focused don't get distracted. Don't be thrown off. And then if somebody else comes to you and is like, I think that what you're doing is abusive, you should take a deep breath and probably take a break. Because all of our first reactions to being told we're the bad guy is usually to freak out. Yeah. And like you should consider what people are saying. Sometimes you will like sometimes it will be like, I don't know, the abusive person that's trying to get the jump on you. Or someone that's trying to manipulate you with false accusations but you could always say okay i will take time to think about it and give yourself some space but yeah if someone tries to reverse on you you just have to stay focused be like no nope. like we'll talk about that maybe later but first it's first it's you don't get into a tennis match yep i agree like that's yeah. pretty much what i what i've said when i've been in that situation i say totally get it um i do want to talk about that but like i can't until we Talk about this thing first that i've brought up first yeah so validate and i'm gonna just repeat what they basically said validate that the person who you're talking to has a right to their emotions and feelings absolutely but that you but then restate yours and sit there and go i would like to discuss this and then we can discuss that so that we're both heard like literally that mm -hmm. i hear you i understand i would like to discuss my issues and then we can discuss yours yeah Pretty much. And then you, you get everything out that you need to get out. And then if the person still wants to talk about that thing they brought up, then you can talk about it. And it's it's fine. And nobody's getting neglected in that. And recognize it's not going to be that easy. Um, a lot of abusers then won't respect that. Mm -hmm. um, 
won't respect that order. Um, they will try to continue to defend themselves by reaccusing you. Um, but when they start doing that, you can start recognizing that behavior. Um, and unfortunately, in abusive situations like that, if it is bad enough that they aren't able to then talk themselves down and go, okay, she, ta- she needs to talk about what she needs to talk about first, and then we can talk about what I need to talk about first. If they are going to continue to come at you as a, well, I want to talk about this. Well, I did that because of this. I did that because of this. Um, you need to recognize that you're in an abusive situation and most times abusive situations can't be solved. Um, I think you can use a technique here when they won't stop. Like you can use a technique here that um, that if you're, you've been in customer service, you've heard before it's called the broken record. When you've got a customer on the phone that you've tried to let them vent and they just will not freaking stop and they won't focus on actually solving the problem or moving it forward or whatever it is that needs to happen on that phone call. And, you know, you can just say things like, totally understand man that is awful that sucks um can we go click that button now that's going to fix this and just say it over and over again until they actually go click the button that's going to solve the thing they're ranting about right um and i think you can kind of do something similar in these types of situations where the um person that's doing that uh reversal keeps trying to do it over and over just keep reasserting your boundaries over and over eventually they'll stop you know because you've told them six times or whatever and navigating this is something that comes with unfortunately practice it is hard it is exhausting the first time it you start also noticing um patterns in the behavior the more often that you do it yep um, which will help you navigate with, oh, how are they close to being able to be able to hear me or are they not being, or are they not close to being able to hear me? How far away is that? How many steps do I have to repeat? That kind of thing. You will mm-hmm. eventually learn how to navigate it if you do continue uh, feeding the relationship. Yep. So. All right. Shall we move on to witch hunting? No, I lied. Yeah. Uh, oh, pitting, pitting people, people against, against someone. someone. Yeah. I had it highlighted. I didn't have it checked off. (laughs) Yes. So pitting people against someone. This is deliberately trying to make someone jealous of other partners. This is gossiping. Um, This is trying to stir the pot between people, uh, things of that nature. And um, you know what? I love a good gossip. Love a good gossip. Yeah, people talk. Like, like, I'm not going to, let's be honest. People talk. You make friends. You talk about people. Is it yep. the most healthy thing in the world? Probably not. Can it be considered abusive? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but it happens. <laughs> so this is as, as, as a gossip to um, probably some fellow gossips. <laughs> Where this comes into play is if you're going to talk about people in a negative way, you have to be careful how often you're doing it. You have to be careful about the things that you're saying. You have yep. to be careful about who you're saying it to because it can absolutely lead to abuse if like you're just constantly talking bad about this person and and this somebody that really didn't have a negative opinion of this person now suddenly does and treats them poorly because of what you told them not because of what that person actually did to them right so that's where you have to be like really careful about some of those behaviors if you realize that friend a is really impressionable and if you bitch about this other person, then friend A is going to now treat this person bad. Maybe friend A is who, not who you gossip with, unless your goal is to be abusive, of course. Um, (laughs) Which some people's goal is. Which, yeah, sometimes that's the goal, right? So this is definitely a behavior that is, that's very human, that's very normal, that a lot of people do. And if you are doing this, you have to really think about, you know, what your goals are, are you are you applying that abuse formula to your behavior and what are the results of your behavior that might be really seriously harmful on the other person and and have them be abused um so yeah that's my main main thing on this as somebody who loves gossip uh you know i have to be very careful because i never want it to turn into abuse you know me venting about someone should not turn into like you hating that person if it does then there's a serious problem there i've done i've you know taken I've taken that choice away from you. I've I've said things that I shouldn't have said, caused things that I shouldn't have caused. I also think it's important to uh, recognize if you are doing this, uh, then you have to approach public situations with a uh, intent to be 
overcorrecting. Um, at least if you're gonna be like kind, and I'm not talking about like being being like two faced. I'm more referring to like you can't be unkind in public to them. You can't be you can't turn other people against them, especially if there's like an inside sort of circle going on, um, because that is in itself really setting someone up without even realizing that they're being set up. Mm-hmm. And it happens, and it happens all the time, especially in friend groups, um, from everything to online to in person. Uh, there is there's the joke about the the full group chat and then the private group chat, um, and that's real. <laughs> Like, that happens. <laughs> uh, and that's, I mean, that's just the society that we have built. But you need to then, when you approach other people, you need to realize that, like, okay, you can't just then continue that attitude to people in public because then that will be very confrontational and very, like, not confrontational. It just very, it'll amp everybody up. Yeah, and nobody wants, and nobody wants to be in that roleplay group or in that server where the click is like a mean girl's yeah. click that's like rude to everybody that's not part of their click. Like that's not that. welcoming. That's not fostering creativity. That's not fun for anybody. Mm. Nobody wants that. Yeah, and I'm not saying that you have to be like two-faced or even be like treat someone like they're, they're your best friends while you're talking shit behind their back. Like that's not what I'm saying. I am saying that you just have to like, because you are already hyper aware of somebody, you need to then be like, okay, let me accept the fact that I need to then treat this delicately. Well, let's just treat yeah. them like they're human. Yes, just but be like civil. But when yeah, you dislike civil. someone, but like as we talked about before, uh, when we dislike someone, our um, level of empathy goes down for somebody. Um, so you do have to sit there and be like, okay, I recognize that my level of empathy empathy for this person has been affected because of my emotional feelings towards this person, and I need to I need to treat that cautiously. I think the word you used, Sasha, was really good. Civil. Civil. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just just basic civility. Like we're not we're not saying you have to be anybody's best friend. You don't have to like fawn nope. over somebody and pay them compliments. I'm talking about like how do you treat other people when you're in line for a roller coaster at a theme park? Or like you're sitting next to other people in the movies or you're eating out at a public restaurant like you you know you understand you take up a, cer a certain amount of space you have the right to be heard and to participate mm -hmm. you you don't have to be a fan of everyone else at the restaurant but you understand their right to be there as well and like come on i'm sure you've seen people at a restaurant mm -hmm. or something and pointed them out to your friend and laugh but like did you go up to them and pour your glass of water on their head <laughs> did you like try and trip the waiter as they were bringing the food over to them? Did like did you try to go to the bathroom at, as at the same time as them so you could like bump into them and like heckle them? Like no, you understand that you can share a public space with somebody and just mind your own business. <laughs> and so like <laughs> yeah, it's shock it's kind of shocking how people understand these implicit social rules in person. But on the internet, like, suddenly you're entitled to be a big dick all the time? I don't, like, I can be civil, I can be even nice and friendly to people that I don't like because I don't believe that liking somebody is the deciding factor for treating them like a human being. Very. And that, that's very. just it. And so the thing is, is when you can't, you not only just can't be civil to somebody, but, like, you are, like, trying to get people to take sides, like... <laughs> You are gossiping excessively. You are, you know, just actively trying to turn people you. against them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I had this done to me. Oh, God, what haven't I had done to me? But, like, this is what <laughs> happens. This is part of what happened to me is I had somebody who was super, super nice to my face, my bestie. And then they would go behind my back and they would talk crap to all of these, like, that they would say how much they hated me and how terrible of a person I was. And they would, this was their trick, they would kind of be like more neutrally friendly in public with me so that people could continue to buy this idea that they hated me. Yeah. Yep. That was shady. That was shady. If you're doing this, that is that is abusive. Once again, I don't care how terrible you think somebody is. We fight above the belt here. Yeah, that's we, right. We are... We have... We, have, we believe in human rights. We believe in standards of decency. Yeah. 
I also very quickly want to mention with this particular topic too, um, playing the DM game of uh, being that person who goes between, like if you're a, if you're a threesome, um, being that person who goes between and DMs both of the people in the group separately trying to get them to clash against each other because you want more of the attention is another example of pitting people against someone or yes. each other. Oh my God. We've had that, that happen is... like in our RPs, like people will yeah. tell different mods, different stories, thinking that we're not going to talk to each other about it yeah. and come to consensus. And it's just ridiculous because you get caught instantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> we, we know <laughs> there is a hive i mean in our in our particular IP, rp there is a hive mind but yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's no and and i mean and i know that happens in the in the group in group rps like in general not amongst the mods we've seen it happen um i'm sure it happens in one-on-one -on -one or 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 three people games all the time where it's like, oh, let's write this thing. And then it'd be like, <laughs> actually, one person is trying to play the other against each other. It's not a yep. fun time. Um, and it is really crappy behavior. Yep. I um, There's a recent situation that um, that I'm aware of. I'm not going to give too many specifics because I don't want to um, out this person or anything. But a recent situation that I'm aware of where um, somebody's um, uh, mother had passed away and then came to find out that these these that the mom, the mom was like a big gossip, right? Um, come to find out that uh, all these people that mom had been shit talking to her daughter, um, she had been going to these people and shit talking the daughter too, so that the daughter would never speak to these other people and corroborate stories. Didn't know had, this girl had no idea until her mom passed away, and of course they all are at the funeral talking about the mom, and they're like, "Wait, she told you that? She told me that about you? Oh my gosh!" Right? So like that's. That's the sort of behavior that we're talking about. It's 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 using it's using those divisions between people to to separate them, to cause them to fight each other, things like that. And again, to Sasha's point, um, people know how to act most of the time in real life, uh, but mm -hmm. seem to forget how to do it in the internet space. And like most people would hear that story about the mom and the daughters and be like, "That's terrible." Um, and then there are a lot of people who would be willing to do the same exact thing, but on an online forum. Yep. And it's like, okay, but that's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, shall we move to the next one? Yes. Witch hunting. Sasha's story. <laughs> what literally Yay. just happened. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And I, and I, I, I kind of talked about this already, but yeah, my definition is completely inventing or exaggerating someone's perceived misbehavior and gathering a group of other people to persecute that person. Like, this is, like, this is a great example of kind of group abuse, like, when everybody kind of gets in on it. Like, a lot of these are individual behaviors, but at this point, like, when we get into, like, gossiping, gaslighting, and witch hunting, we are, we are getting into things where, like, people do... Now, don't feel just individually justified, but uh, collectively justified. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that violence is violence. Like, abuse is abuse. Like, you believe in human rights or you don't. You believe that all people deserve dignity or you don't. And if you don't believe that all people deserve rights or all people deserve dignity, then once again, you're in the same camp as, like, racists and homophobes and transphobes. Like, that is the side that you are on. Like, if you are just debating with them who is the correct target. And I think that, like I said, I was I talked about this while you were being Karen, like it can be very difficult when you feel like someone is gross or has done harm or like you have proof that they committed harm in the past or even harm in the present. But like I said, just even, even if somebody came to me like right this very moment and they were like, I have proof, un like I have unequivocal proof that like someone has committed harm in your server, I would still go to that person and be like, here's your proof. What do you have to say for yourself? Because I actually believe in due process. Yes. A lot of people like, this goes on so much in America. People are like, I believe in free speech and due process, except when it's online and I don't like people. And then <laughs> I have no standards at all. And it's like, it's so okay, true, all right. 
Yeah. It's so true. Like they expect, like people come, like people come to me as like a, a server mod. And I know you experienced this too, Sasha, of like, this person is racist or this person is abusive and they just expect me to ban them and they don't show me any proof. I'm like, where's the screenshots of them doing this? They, they like, and, and then like my response after I, if they produce the screenshots, a lot of times they don't, but if they produce the screenshots, then my response is, okay, give me a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to sort this out and get their side of the story. I'll get back to you. Right. And, uh, and people do not like hearing that. Oh my, <laughs> Listen, but so I'm not going to witch C hunt. <laughs> in my C box fight, somebody says to me, Victims should not have to wear a flashing light saying, I was abused. Here's our DMs for you to take them seriously. And I said, victims have to prove shit just like everyone else. Yes. Like you, and I know that can be very hard with like offline interpersonal interactions. Like for example, if you were abused by a parent or a relative, that is hard. That is very hard to prove. That's why it's part of the reason why it's so difficult to process real child abuse cases. And that is, that is tough. And, but like online, like my friend, like you have, you will have proof that somebody made phone calls with you. You will have screenshots of interaction. You will have context. You probably met this person like in a community. You can show what communities you share. Like you have more access to proof of abuse than so many people offline do. And because you have access to that, you absolutely have the burden of proof upon you to present that and why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to prove it and so you know and and then again and then once again once it has been proved after that like then it is about it is about proportional consequences mm -hmm. and and the thing is is that the when people hear consequences they often think of like i think intense disproportional stuff like they want people to be scoured from the face of the earth and like I, when I was victimized back in uh, 2019, like I did not want my abuser scoured from the face of the earth. I think that blows people's minds. I don't want my dad scoured from the face of the earth. Like I want accountability. I want people to know what was done to me and I want emotional support and I want people to care about me and respect what happened. And I want the other person to not necessarily be in any spaces with me. But then after that, like they need people should go live their lives and have the opportunity to change. Like, you know, like that's that's the thing. And I understand sometimes people are like this person did something so terrible. Other people should be warned. And I understand that. But like in cases with like like in so many cases, like who needs to be told? Does literally every single person on the street need to know? Is this person in a position of power or is this person just a regular old Joe? Like maybe some people shouldn't be in positions of power based on things that they've done. But like everybody deserves the right to be able to try to start over and to try to live their life in peace once they've been held accountable and once there have been consequences. Like please don't think that I'm like the, the Nazis that ran away to South America did the right thing. Like that's not what I'm going for here either. But this desire to like obsessively punish is in itself. Yeah, and consequences can vary, right? It depends on what the offense is. Consequences might simply be getting told that you hurt this person's feelings. Sometimes that's consequence enough, you know? It really just depends. Sometimes consequences are getting banned from a community, right? Sometimes consequences are your account gets suspended from Twitter. You know, it just, it just depends on whatever the situation is, but the key is proportional. And witch hunts, witch hunts, at least from what I have seen, they're never proportional. It's always about making sure that person is extra super duper punished for what they did. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really tough witch hunt. I mean, the thing with the witch hunt is that because of the like name of where it comes from, the person is guilty before they've even had a trial, right? It, it takes place after the actual witch trials where it was like no nope, everyone is guilty just by association just because they are there doesn't have to be any proof um i do want to be i do think we should move on because we are at an hour and 20 minutes over already yep <laughs> and we still have fun to get through so uh i do want to try to move this along yes okay 
So the next thing is if you see any of these um, abusive behaviors, or if you see enough red flags where you think abuse might be going on, there's just one main point that we wanted to make here is that the victim of the abuse is often not in a position to hold the abusive person accountable. And yeah. what I mean by that is that because of the way that the, the, the victim was treated, a lot of times their instinct to like try to punish their abuser is going to override what an actual fair and just consequence is. Um, so a lot... It can feel like, you know, as the victim that you want to go hold the person accountable, but that's not always possible. So sometimes what that means is that you as the victim are going to need to go and get support from other people and help other people uh, understand what happened so that they can help you hold that person accountable or, you know, help you through the situation or, or things of that nature. So my first ad piece of advice to, to victims in general is like, tell somebody. And I know that's hard, and I know it doesn't always result in the right thing, but that is step one, is tell somebody so that you're not experiencing this alone. Well, and you will, in our experience, um, when people who are the victims of this abuse on RP forums come forward, uh, they are met with the realization that they are not the only people seeing it. Mm -hmm. That they are not the only people in the know. Um... Sometimes, yes, but a lot of the times when we've had it in our groups, it's like, no, we, we've we been new. We've been seeing it. We just didn't know if you had an issue with it. Um, so coming forward well, and Because it's online. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's actual abuse or if it's just two Absolutely. people not getting along. You know? Yeah, and, different, and, it, like, and also, like, some people might really like it. Like, what seems like enthusiasm to one person might also seem like possessiveness to another, right? So, like, all of that, that you don't have the context of everything. And also in, in relationships and things like that, partnerships, you don't have the context to most things. Mm -hmm. So uh, from the outside, something can look like it's a situation that you don't necessarily want to be in, um, but the people inside of it might love it. <laughs> so, so, um, but that has happened. So, so talk to people, reach out, reach out to your mods for help. If you're in a group, um, also, you, because it is an online forum, if it is an abuse situation, and this is so much easier said than done, but you don't owe that person anything other than a, hey, I'm going to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. Which is hard because we as humans don't necessarily want to do that. Yep. Um, especially if we sympathize with the person who's with this abusive behavior. Right. But you are justified. You don't have to finish anything that you've agreed with. You don't have to finish plots. You don't have to finish ships. You don't have to finish conversations, even. Yeah. Um, if you want to dip, then you are entitled to dip. Mm -hmm. And when it and comes so to, like... Easier. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just saying it was so much easier said than done, like... Yeah. But wanted to say it. And and when the when the when when we're talking about, like, holding the abusive person accountable and, um, and enacting, you know, whatever it needs to happen for the consequences for that person... Um, it usually takes multiple people, uh, to kind of like enact whatever that is. So like, I'll give a, a really easy example. Somebody is doing abuse towards another person and you tell the mods and the mods end up going to the abuser, agree. Maybe they, they have these conversations, right? They agree that, okay, what this person did, did is abusive. Hey person, you're going to get a strike and um we're going to be keeping an eye on on this situation and you're not to do this anymore right like maybe that's the situation and it and it takes you know that group of mods actually doing that right monitoring those situations making sure that what this person did they're told that like that's not acceptable in their space and all these things it's not it's typically not a job that one person can take on where the abuser can understand what they did and be able to make the change to not do it again in the future because that's the whole goal, right? Is for the abuser to stop doing the abusing, right? To stop the behaviors that, that cause the abuse. Yep. Yep. It's, it's a, com I mean, and it's, it's a complicated thing that is like really boiled down to a point because there, there are infinite, <sighs> infinite possibilities and infinite ways of, of how things can be derailed. But really at the end of the day, it is just, you as the victim will never find satisfaction with how the abuser 
is found justice. Um, and to it just feel good. No, it won't feel good, no matter what. And even if it was incredibly skewed in your direction, uh, it will never solve the problem. <laughs> like, like that's the reason why cancellations happen, is because you like cancellations being like social media canceling, because not one is big enough. Mm-hmm. It's not big enough. That mob mentality, the witch hunts, it's not big enough. Um, that's why they explode. Um, yep. It's because it's never enough. Nothing will ever be enough, especially from victims. Yep. So I'm going to, Landis said we wanted to move this along. So I know yep. we have a section where we want to talk about like, what if some, what if you're not the victim, but someone comes to you with, I've been abused. But before we do that, Sasha, was there anything you wanted to add for like advice for the victim before we move to like advice for the person that's trying to help? I think Sasha, I think she might be having connection issues. Okay. Um, we'll Take pick up. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move then to, to that. Like, what do you Wait, do? You Oh yeah, oh, yeah. There we go. I'm sorry, I was muted. Ding ding. Um, okay. So, so no, I I just wanted to definitely say yes. It's super important that you talk to people about what was happening. When my thing started happening to me, like my first reaction was I just wanted to crawl into a hole and die. Like I just I was so ashamed. Like I felt so stupid. I just felt like an idiot. I was so humiliated. I was afraid of what people would think about me. And I just, I didn't want anybody to know about it. And everybody's situation is different. But from what I know, those are, those are common feelings. And it didn't start getting better for me until I was, was able to talk to my friends about it. And I was able to talk to other people in my community. Do not try to solve this on your own. Like part of when you're a victim, what you need is emotional support. Like you need people to be there for you. And you do have to reach out and you do have to be vulnerable. And like, you know, in in different abusive situations, like sometimes you may have, you may have done things that you're not proud of. Like, you know, a lot of, one of the ways that abusers kind of get you is like once they mentally break you down, you probably start doing some weird crap too or you get into like codependent relationships and you or maybe on the surface you've been like apparently in a relationship with this person or you've been friends with this person on the surface for a long time and you've been covering up their sketchy behavior towards you and now you have to come out and admit that this has been happening the whole time that is super hard and i really feel for you but gotta tell somebody just you have to tell people that is when it'll start to get better yeah um jane if the if the abuse if the abuser in this situation is a leader in that community i think you have two choices one you can go to a different leader hopefully there's multiple and see if they'll help you out um or like what i've done is that's that's a time that's a time to leave the community like if the leader of the community is the one perpetuating the abuse then um typically i will self-select out that's that's my experience there yeah that you just at that point like maybe if you have other friends in that community tell them about the leader but you like i guess another thing is don't go expecting to depose somebody i know we hear a lot of hero narratives i'm gonna take down the evil king like buddy you probably are not and you need to think about your own true health first which is more based on like getting support and connecting with your peers like as of, I guess I, I should also say, as a victim, oh, here, this is relevant. As a victim, do not be tempted by the empty promise of vengeance. I heard a quote once Vengeance is the lazy form of grief. Vengeance is the lazy form of grief. You have to process your sadness about what has happened. You have to get emotional support. Like, do not be drawn into trying to just get back at somebody or take somebody down. Like that can feel promising or satisfying, but what's more important is to tell people about what's been happening, get support and get away. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Soggy Lemons. We have a friend who's who goes by Soggy as well. So we assumed it was you. Just yep. do the same, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what Sasha said is 100% true. Yep. All right, so then We can move then to if you are somebody that a victim is coming to and being like, hey, this is a problem. This is happening to me. I need help. Um, What's some of the things that you can do? 
as that person that's trying to help the victim and resolve the situation. Um, we've got a couple of things here, but uh, but Landon or Sasha, does does one of you guys want to take the first one? Um, yeah, I can do it. Okay. So, being patient, understanding, but stern confrontation is necessary um, to direct behavior back on track. So, you are never going to correct someone's behavior by yelling at them. You are never going to correct someone's behavior by shaming them. And you will never correct someone's behavior by being abusive back. <laughs> um, how as you tempting as it, it may feel. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. as tempting as it is, that it doesn't work. Like it's it's statistically been shown not to work. Um, so knowing your boundaries, knowing the result you want, um, and a clear path on how to get there, knowing that it might not go down that path, but at least having an idea, and being patient and understanding, but strict in that in that like belief and what you're trying to accomplish is really the way to do it. Um, abuse rarely happens out in the open. It's behind closed doors and it thrives on not talking about it. Uh, and it thrives on people being too scared or ashamed or confused in their experiences. Um, and the, it, and on like members of the community being uncomfortable to call it out or identify the bad behavior. Um, Especially because they're scared of the reaction that it might get as far as, like, the effect it might have on people that they like or respect. So, um, abuse and calling out an abuse or raising attention to an abuse doesn't have to necessarily be burning that person publicly at the stake. Like, it really can be going to community leaders, going to people um, who going to people who you can ask for help with, or if you are those people, then really just approaching it directly, uh, answering to it, not putty fitting around it, just going in on it. Yep. Like one thing that I definitely do when somebody comes to me with a complaint about another person or an accusation of abuse or something like that, one of the very first things that I'm going to do is try to gather their story and gather all the facts. So that means I wanna know, how, from their perspective, what happened? How do they feel about it? I want to see any screenshots they have. Um, you know, I want a full picture. And so I ask a lot of questions. I ask a lot of questions. And um, it, it comes, when you ask these questions, you want to do it from a place of understanding and patience and make sure that the person knows that, hey, I want to get the full story so that we can, you know, make the right decision here so that we can help you as best as we can. Um, so that they don't feel like, oh, they're just drilling me with a bunch of questions and they're not actually listening because that's not the goal, right? The goal is for me to get the full story um, because I never, I've just had too many times <laughs> in these DMs where getting the full story was actually hard or didn't exist or whatever. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's, you know, I think the main goal is to patiently and with understanding and compassion, gather all the information because you can't possibly make a decision if you don't know every single piece of the puzzle. I wa also want to add honesty on there too, because um, it's really hard. Like sometimes when you're when you're approaching it, you have to like withhold some information. Um, but if you are honest about what it is you're looking for. Um, why you're asking these questions. If it's not just feeling like an interrogation, if you're willing to open it up and have a conversation, um, it will seem like more like a, comp a, a conversation. Um, and people will explain more because they will want to get you on their side, mm -hmm. um, which is not a bad thing, <laughs> but it just, it helps as far as the whole thing goes because then you'll be able to sit there and be like, okay, I have the full story because this is the story they want to tell me that this is their truth. This is them in the best light. I have the other person in the best light. Now it is my job to figure out where to go from there. Mm -hmm. Cause there's, there's three sides to every story, right? There's my side, there's your side, then there's the truth. <laughs> and you're well, and trying to find the like, truth. And there's everybody and else's side too. <laughs> yeah. I do want to point out something here that's also important is that like, Part of, uh, you know, you. one of the things that they say in the book is that um, they do say, like, don't be neutral in a situation with abuse. Like, 
<laughs> like if someone is like, I am abusing, like, you know, if you've figured out that somebody has done abusive behavior and you've figured out the other person is, I don't know, like difficult. This is kind of what happens when you go through trauma is you become a bit of a difficult person. Like that's kind of one of the results of it. And if you have had, if someone's treated you like crap, online or in some way or you've been through this like stressful engagement you probably aren't going to be your best self like no one goes through abuse and comes out the other side shinier than when they went in Mm -hmm. so like once you've identified like you know a genuinely abusive behavior like you don't get to be neutral anymore like you do have to do something about it and the another thing i want to point out is there's no mutually abusive situations there's no mutually abusive situations because abuse depends on a power dynamic like once you have identified a power dynamic where someone is trying to exert and control and is controlling another person like that's what it is sometimes you will have people that come to you and they are fighting like two people who are just fighting so you do have to be kind of clear-eyed about and the information that's being presented to you is this abuse is this a conflict like what tactics are being employed here and so you do want to compassionately get the full story like you will deal with situations where there's abuse and you will deal with situations where there's conflict and you have to have the courage to kind of look at things like it's easy to be like i'm just going to be neutral both of you are bad and it's also easy to just be like I believe everything that is told to me without asking further questions, I will witch hunt this person out of my community immediately. Like none of those things are courageous. Like you, you know, both of those people feel morally superior. One person feels like they, you know, that because they're a centrist, that they understand the real truth. And one person feels that like they're a victim's advocate by like going off at, you know, the touch of a hat. But neither of those people have genuinely engaged with the situation, which is what we are called to do. If somebody comes to you and is telling you what's happening, you should take it seriously. Because only by taking these things seriously and by examining them in detail are we going to change them. You're not going to change things by doing either of those other two things. Exactly. Exactly. Because what the right answer is, is not always easy. Like sometimes it's hard, you know? Um, it just really, and it, and it depends on the situation, right? Sometimes, sometimes the, the answer is very clear and sometimes it's kind of muddy. Um, I mean, I can definitely think of situations where there, there was maybe some abuse going on and the answer was something more like, okay, so just, you need to not engage with this person and you need to let us know if they are forcing engagements with you right or maybe the situation is like really abusive and you need to go to the abuser and actually remove them from the community maybe you need to issue warnings or strikes like it just it all depends on exactly what's happening in the full context of it and the only way that you're going to be able to figure out what that is is to take it seriously and to think you know if this person's saying i'm being abused that they truly believe they're being abused whether they actually are or not in your opinion yeah That is a great way to say that because it's true. Um, Oh, I had another thought, but I can't remember it. So it's fine. We'll move on. (laughs) Any other, any other comments about uh, being a community member or, uh, or a person who's like mod dealing with this sort of stuff? I guess the, I've already, again, repeating myself at this point, but just like, sometimes you can't give people everything that they want like that situation where people are just i'm having to like litigate somebody's like decades old criminal history like i have a lot of people that are mad at me they are fucking pissed and like sometimes you are gonna have if you are a community leader in any form you're gonna have people demand stuff from you they're gonna be like i demand you remove this person from the community or i demand you do this or that that or if they get all vengeancy and you you hear that they are now like that they are like spreading around abuse about their abuser like you will be in a position where you you cannot please everybody or possibly you can't please anybody at all but this is why we have ethics like this is why we don't decide what to do based on our feelings and part of talking about all of this is so we can define like really clear standards about what these behaviors are like what is expected 
and how to to govern in a way based on them either as a leader or an interpersonal person in your friendships but sometimes you're just you're not going to be able to give people exactly what they want and that is okay yeah sometimes you have to compromise and part of compromise means that no one is perfectly happy yeah. um so All right. then our last our last piece right is um if you're doing any of these any of these behaviors if you've listened to the past three and a half hours and you're like oh shit i am the baddie um what what advice do we have for you first of all congratulations on being extremely self-aware and really proven that you are human and have sex uh just wanna just come on out there with that like that's awesome it like oh it, and that's genuine that that it takes a lot of time for sometimes for these abusive behaviors to sink in and people to realize that they are not as perfect as their narrative wants them to be mm -hmm. Thank you for the raid, Jed. We are actually wrapping up. We're going to probably be done in about 10, 15 minutes here, but thank you so much for the raid, Jed. Um, yes, absolutely. I totally agree with that, Landon. So so if, you, uh, if you're the baddie, what, what should you do? First, you're going to have to take a really deep breath because like part of the, uh, the human psyche is the, the need to believe in a certain narrative yes. about ourselves and when you if you are abusive then you have ingested beliefs about what you're entitled to whether that like i said whether that's like the vengeance you are entitled to as a victim whether it's the amount of attention that you're entitled to because you've been hurt or mistreated elsewhere in life whether you just believe that you are just so fucking awesome that other people should just do what you say you're entitled to have people do what you say because you are just that cool like that is very hard but you i really would encourage you to to stop and think about what you're losing because the thing is is that there are privileges that accrue to you based on being abusive for a while or a period of time you can get you know people can think that you are a certain kind of person you can extract things from other people like maybe you do get them to post faster maybe you do get them to plot exactly what you want like i that's the thing about abuse is that people do it because it works like it does <laughs> It actually does work on a lot of levels. Otherwise, people would not do it anymore. But the things that you lose, like, I'll just get a, get a hold of my dad. One of the saddest people, like, my mom said, my parents are divorced, but my mom said to him once, you are going to die a lonely old man just like your father. And my dad thinks about that, like, every day. Like, every time he, like, on occasion talks to my mom, like it comes around to that because and that is the that is the cloud that he lives under and may die under if you are if you are shattering human connections with other people if you are abusing somebody first of all you can't be close to them and second of all you're lying to the world all the time about who you are you are just lying and lying and lying and on some level you know it because you have to cover up your abuse because if other people saw it or understood what it was, they would stop you. So on some part of you knows that you are a big liar and there's part of you that knows that if people knew who you were, they wouldn't like you. And that is the specter of shame. The book, the abuse book doesn't really talk about this, but I, I think it is kind of an, a, a bit of an overlooked perspective because shame is a huge driver of really terrible antisocial behavior and the thing is is you don't have to live like that if you are treating people like shit you can there you can give up those privileges and you can choose a life where you can connect with other people and you can be who you are out in public and be truly who you are and not have to be afraid that when people find out what you're doing they'll abandon you like you can have that life it is great i have I have dealt with a lot of shame for different reasons, but it's great when you know that people really like you for who you are. You can like, so come, come out, come on to this side. It's, it's better over here. The, the water's warm. The grass is greener. I promise. Yep. It is. It, you get, it's better in the long run. It's better in the long run to just to be honest and kind than it is to be abusive. Yes. True. 
All right. All you need is love. And if you have to coerce other people into loving you, it's not real love. Okay? Okay. It will run out. It will eventually run out. And, we don't and it won't be, be enough. And, you know, we don't want to be that. And I know Sasha picked on your dad, so I'm going to state a stereotype that he probably falls into. None of us want to be that 50-something-year-old man that has failed marriages behind them and whose kids don't talk to them anymore. So, you know, don't set yourself up for that with your online relationships either. Exactly. Yep. That, that, All right. My, da my dad is the stereotype. He is what you were warned not to be. You don't want to be my, my dad. Listener, you don't want to be my dad. Get, get off the train now. There's time. There's time. Yes. All right. Are we good? Is there anything else that we want to say on this topic? Oh my God, I... four hour stream. I'm so sorry, you guys. I knew it would run long. I didn't think it would run this long. I'm, yeah, I'm apologizing to Landon and Sasha, by the way, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, you, you should split it into two videos. That's what you should do. Oh my God. So that way, people don't, that way people don't look at the four hour thing and like refuse to click it. You know, like we need to trick them. Mm -mm, trick maybe. <laughs> I'll look at where um, I can break it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I the think for, break. the reality is that I could talk about this all day long. Uh, basically have and uh can't so i think that to wrap it up no one deserves to be abused know that you have abused or have abusive tendencies um or behaviors and that is perfectly human no one is perfect continue to grow and seek how to grow grow yep our that goal is here together, we could all be better that's right yeah our goal here is just to, whatever you did today, do better tomorrow. That's that's the ask. That's the ask and that we are giving to you. Absolutely. And know that there are some days that you won't succeed. And that is perfectly okay. That is not a reason to then start abusing again. Yeah. Just always so. do better tomorrow. Yep. No yep. backsliding. <laughs> that's right. All right. All right. Are we ready for the good news article? I need some good news. <laughs> we do, don't we? We no. started we started the stream with kittens. <laughs> we did. So I am providing something other than kittens. Alright. <clears throat> uh, let me quit the game. Alright. Oh, Here we go. Aw, oh, puppies! <laughs> Six puppies were all determined to fit into one small bucket and they succeeded. Oh boy. They did. <laughs> they, they be doing succeeding. Oh my gosh, here we go. We're I watching it right now. It's such a heavy topic. We all deserved a little bit of a smile. And I mean, the bears last week were very cute, but puppies, puppies are puppies. Oh my gosh. And they're doing the cat thing of I fits, I sits, but it's puppies. But it's this goes against your nature. How are you doing this, dogs? They also fits and sits. Clearly. <laughs> so, okay, there's, there's one still off camera. Huh? But there's one still off camera. We're waiting for the final puppy. It just is a puppy pile. It literally is a puppy pile, and it's just <sighs> so nice. Gosh. Oh, here he comes. Aww. Can you do it, last dog? You have, there we go. There we go, congratulations. Congratulations to the puppies. <laughs> they do make it. And it's a very full bucket. So <laughs> I figured that that was a fun little note to leave off on. Yes, that's very cute, that's very cute. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, guys. So with that being said, let's do outros. Sasha, where can everybody find you? Sasha is so glad she didn't say where she's from at the beginning of this stream, where everyone was triggered and angriest. You had to get to the end to find out who I am. Good job. Um, <laughs> you had to sit through the puppies. <laughs> you had to sit through the puppies. So I am the leader of Barber Monger. Spelled like it sounds, you can Google it. Barber Monger Roleplay will probably get you to my site. Site is barbermonger.me. I have a, a Discord that is uh, in Karen's uh, partners, in her partner server. And, and uh, yeah, and I, I guess I uh, kind of host a book club now. 
or I allow the hosting of a, of a book club. We talk about, we read fiction, we talk about social justice issues. I, I jazz people around about role play stuff all day. So if you like anything that I have to say, I guess if you want to fight me, which again, 30 something people did today, I <laughs> come and come and get me. As long as you're civil, I will humor you for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> I love oh that. my gosh. <laughs> yeah, go fight Sasha in Barbermonger. <laughs> go do it. Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I don't know why the bot's broken. Listen, While Sasha will, was talking, I was trying to fix hear. it. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, oh no, just, I have a channel on the server. It's called Deep Thoughts, where people literally like long form essays or news articles, or we have like really protracted discussions about various things. So I am no stranger to debate, listener. Just you have to actually have thought through your points. If you fight me on any one on one topic, I will immediately disarm you and ignore you. So just just be ready <laughs> to bring your A game. Make sure you have an A game. Sasha is a good fighter. <laughs> I am like an Aikido fighter. I will use your motion against you. It's gonna it'll look really funny. But you'll hate it. So just, I love you. I love people. I love everybody. That's why I talk about these things because I believe all of us can do better. But if you try to punch me, you'll probably miss. So you've been warned. Yep. All right. Um, Landon, where can everybody find you? You can find me on my TikTok, Land in Maine. You can also find me on my tarot TikTok. It's been blowing up. You can find that at Land in Reverie. Both are puns. So they're spelled L A N D I N um and also i don't know i'm still doing the etsy shop thing so if you want to follow my etsy shop that's also land in reverie i do tarot readings i've been told i'm good um and that's what i have for you this evening and by evening i mean afternoon my brain is fried the two coffees have worn off <laughs> <laughs> i think the two coffees have fried your brain Landon. <sighs> It did. It did it last time where I was like, I'm so drunk on caffeine. And now I'm just like, wow. Okay. <laughs> You're on the come down. You're on the come down right now. If I have too much coffee, like I feel really great for like 20, 30 minutes. And then two hours later, I feel like I've baked myself from yeah, the inside. A little bit, a little bit feeling that. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So that's where you can find me. Karen, where they, where can they find you? Um, well, the bot's not working right now, so I can't do my fancy exclamation socials, but y'all know where to find me. Y'all know where to find me right here. Uh, on Saturdays at noon and um, on Thursdays at 6.30, the all times are Eastern. Uh, Spare Room's on hiatus right now, so not going to be a new episode on Wednesday, but there will be one next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, I have Twitter and TikTok, which I've super neglected my TikTok, but we won't, we won't talk about that. Life's still been crazy. You know how it goes. <laughs> all right. So we are going to raid um, Cucumber Cow, who is, uh, who is really hilarious. Hopefully he's doing something funny right now. I don't know. It says that he's playing um, Factorio. I don't know what that is, but we're going to go find out. All right. Anything um, Anything else, guys, and say say goodbye before I hit this raid? Um, don't forget to be awesome. If you listen to this, you are a champion. You're my friend now by default, even if you hate me. If you listened to four hours of this, we are bonded. Oh, my God, Tasha, does that mean we're bonded? We've already been bonded, Landon. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have I have connection issues. It's fine. Um, <laughs> All right, guys. I'm here for you, and I'll need you to read my tarot at some point. But that's dangerous. Tarot cards always kick my ass. Do so it. I'm careful. <laughs> All right, All guys. Right. Uh, don't forget to make it a great day. All right, go have have fun watching um, cucumber cow. All right, I will see y'all on Thursday. Okay, bye everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>